Welcome back to Lorehammer. My name is Eric. Hey, bing bong, bing bong. That's on All right. Into this myself. Also <laughs> joining us today is Christian. Hello, everybody. Thank you for thank you for joining us again for the last time. For the last time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, you know, I, it goes without saying at this point. I, yeah, I shouldn't bring it up again then. Well, I shouldn't have to say it. You should just understand that you're never coming back. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then also joining us today for the first time in a long time. Yeah. Is Micah. Hello. How how you doing? Doing good. Good. Yeah. yeah. It's been been a while. It's we, we've moved up since the last time you've seen us. Yeah. No more recording in my mom's basement with you. Was so. that you really haven't been here since we've done this? Yeah, no, it's been it's been that long. You gotta go closer. I, I've oh. told people before H- that H- you hello. can raise the mic. Up. <laughs> <laughs> Just, oh, that's you're gonna a, have back problems. Pull it. So it's, <laughs> yeah. Start making mouth then it noises. Covers the screen. Oh, there's probably so much popping for me adjusting that mic. I apologize. No, you're fine. Yeah, see that's you can tell. Moving. You can tell Micah hasn't been on an episode in a while. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't even know how to podcast. Ooh, Dost no. thou use thy microphone, brother? <laughs> but yeah, it's been a minute since you've been on. Yeah, got married, finished school, Ooh, nice. got a new job. So you're no <laughs> moved out of my parents' house. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so that's good. That and, is uh, nice. And what have Mark and Eric achieved in that time? Um, I sat on a thumbtack, <laughs> <laughs> and it really hurt. Still recovering. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gonna have to go to. Therapy, physio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna drain my savings. I think <laughs> just dealing with that problem. That's, but uh, not, not all of us can be as successful <laughs> as you are. Micah. That is so the most success I've had in my life within a short period of time. Because a few years before that, I was working at a KFC. So <laughs> <laughs> real fast growth. Was yeah. it at least a KFC just, Taco Bell, or was it just KFC? No, just KFC. Oh god, I'm, I'm not, marks okay. out. Marks uh, out. Yeah, no I, Taco Bell. Oh gosh, I can't learn two menus. <laughs> <laughs> You're way overqualified. <laughs> Under underqualified. Don't have the capacity. <laughs> Cool. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, glad to have you back. Um, something we need to do before we actually start talking about our episode of today, which is the Legio Cybernetica. Yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. It is. I'm going to crunch some ones and zeros. Yeah, we actually decided to record this entire episode, like the episode portion, in binary. Uh, I'm non-binary, though. So <laughs> no, no, no. You can be non-binary. <laughs> be speaking binary. Sorry. You can be non-binary, but we're speaking the binaric language. Oh, okay. Sorry, I misunderstood. Yes. I just am so ready to jump on people. I know. I know, am I, I know you're willing to jump on people. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, before we get into it, let's thank our brand new um, members of the Imperial Tithe. Yeah, yeah. Which is what we've started calling our Patreon by popular and demand. Patreon and also like I do put um, on this list one time donations yeah, as well. people who have just offered donations yeah. to us in people the period. So. <laughs> What's However the we get their money, it doesn't <laughs> yeah. matter. In the eyes of God <laughs> and before the law. <laughs> I think before the law I might have some problems with that. But. Uh, anyways, Ooh. here we go. Uh, so these are all our new members of the Imperial Tithe. We have Carlton. I do it from Iceland. Karen, George. I do it from Iceland. I think it says idiot, isn't it? I do it from... <laughs> no, oh. idiot is spelled wrong? No, you're... No, you're right. No, I'm right. Yeah, I do yeah. it from Iceland. I do it from Iceland. Okay. But if you idiot look at is... it wrong, it says, like, I do it from Iceland. I... <laughs> My brain does also want to see hmm. the mice. Yeah, yeah. I, I see Miceland, yeah. definitely. Uh, so I do it from Iceland. <laughs> Karen, uh-huh. George, Axel, Yeet Boy, Carbon Cry, Corporal Knobs, Brain, Andrew, Lil Anton, Garrus, Ben, Daniel, Texas Red 99, Adam, Derek, Justin, Andreas, Banhead, Paul, Rain, Andrew, Jacob, Kirill, Carl, Zach, Carl. Kyle, Squaw Room, Orion, Braden, Jonk or the Yonk? I don't know that one. Dennis, Frigid Jackal, Brody, <laughs> <laughs> Jorge, David, Nick, Nicole, Michael, Kellen, Tim, Marcus, Gerald, Bobby R. B. Darren, Charles. We're getting there. Woo! Christ Puncher. <laughs> Joao Christian Puncher. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, Joao, Joao, Joao. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. You know who you are. <laughs> you know what you did to us. Uh, Steven, Jake, Jono, Jesse, Thomas. Present. <laughs> 
Jokero, Mecca, Keldon, and Derek. Those are all our new uh, subscribers to our Patreon. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone. That, thank uh, you a lot. lot. Yeah. Um, and then we also got two people just did one-time donations yeah. uh, to us. So thank you, Cookie and Spenny. Yeah. Spent. No, it's Spenny. Mark wrote it wrong. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I think it was like something like in my mind, he spent a lot of money on us. So his name. <laughs> yeah. That's how well Eric knows each and every one of you patrons. That's right. That's yeah, how yeah. much I care. <laughs> <laughs> Please donate now. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, thank you guys. We're we're working our way up and yeah. um, we're we're really close. We're getting to where we want to be in yeah, life, I it, guess. It's getting yeah. pretty close to the point... Uh, where we're pretty comfortable with this, and and we're we got a lot planned, many yeah. big big things, yeah. which we've our, said for a while. Our goal is now. Um, to get two thousand dollars on Canadian or in Canadian because Patreon's American. So if yeah. you look at it, then it, the conversion will be weird. But we want two thousand dollars on Patreon in Canadian money, and then we're gonna unleash kind of like the next phase. Yeah, we're. You don't know what this is yet, but I have big things. That makes me nervous. Oh yes. Uh, what is that has something to do with all the blow up dolls you ordered? Oh, well. <laughs> that makes me super nervous. <laughs> Half of them. So Half of them are for personal. W- use. <laughs> we're making we're making progress, <laughs> but uh, yeah, help us out because like we want to put more time into the podcast, but you know it, it requires time and resources. So yeah. you know, help us get to that next goal on Patreon. We're gonna do like this whole big Patreon revamp here. Yeah, and um, that's that's going right into the next thing is yeah. we are uh, in talks mark and i are of revamping almost every medium that we have yeah so we're, go- we're going through our facebook our instagram our patreon our discord and we're going to try and hash out what we want each of these platforms to do yeah and uh, patreon is something we feel like we can do a lot more for yeah yeah we want to specifically start for doing patreon like, people exactly um and the biggest thing is going to be um this episode is actually being recorded. Yes. I know I've said that before. No, this is... Uh, we're <laughs> but, now, but this time for yeah. real yeah. We have so like a 98%. Every time we tried, we ran into a new issue. Yeah. So now this time, we actually have every issue worked out. We have like an Maybe. actual guy who's going to video edit. Maybe. Don't Allegedly. you bring that Until bad it's done. here. Until it's Allegedly done. Allegedly yeah. solved all of the problems. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but we actually have a guy doing the video editing and stuff. So like um, the first big thing on Patreon is uh, video content. So if you want to watch us recording... Um, you have to become a Patreon member. Yeah, and you have to do a minimum of two dollars. Yeah, that's that's going to be our first uh, product that we're actually releasing yeah. for Patreon specific people. And yeah. it's you give us two bucks a month, and you will get two full episodes worth of video. Yeah, and it's nice. It's nice. You know, you get to see Christian point at me, and then me kind of just look away from him. Not yeah, yeah. Him. Pretend like so he that, didn't. Yeah, do that's that. always do nice. a cue. <laughs> yeah, and that's your goal. That's your goal. You're missing it. You're missing uh, it. I'm not picking up the cue. Uh, but yeah, no, it, it, it's nice. Um, I know some people like video content. So yeah, for two dollars a month, you'll be able to watch us uh, talk. And yeah, you could watch us talk. Yeah, watch us talk. As opposed to just you listen. can hear for free. <laughs> yeah, you can yeah. still hear for free. If you want to see Eric's beard and shaved head. <laughs> Not saying he's a skinhead, but I do see skin <laughs> on Why would you head. even say that? <laughs> well, you're not one. <laughs> what Are you one? I'm not. <laughs> oh, well, then why are you upset? <laughs> why are we all yelling? <laughs> so, yeah, go hop on our Patreon. Check us out. Support us. Um, we do a lot of content. And uh, Do you accept it, pesos? Yeah, yeah whatever. Whatever do you, you want to give us. what? Pesos. Yes, but many. Fuck. I even accept tacos. If you mail me tacos, uh, uh, I'll put you on the Patreon list. How? I don't know. That's not up to me to figure out how to <laughs> That's up to Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> Just because we're using unorthodox currency. Yeah. <laughs> That's not our problem. <laughs> Patreon writes a new policy just because of you. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, so but expect some changes to be coming pretty quick to all like within the next couple months to all of our things. It yeah. Should be and more, especially on Patreon. Especially specific, Patreon. Specific, yeah. Yeah. That's what we want to focus um, our efforts right now is making sure that it's worth it for all of our Patreon members to actually join us. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the next thing we want to talk about real quick is we did a painting competition. So we now we announced that last week, and uh, the winner will be at this point when the episode's released will be announced on our Discord. Mm-hmm. So go on to that, check it out. Um, yeah, this was a, a painting contest that was just for our Patreon members, actually. Yeah. So we're kind of we're dipping our toes into offering Patreon exclusive. Yeah content and yeah. this was one of the first things that we're actually doing yeah. for there, there is quite a few cool models submitted yeah it's very fun no. what micah <laughs> do bases have to be painted you could do whatever you want you you could yeah. throw a gray plastic model on there yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. the there more complete standards. the model is the better it's gonna be so 
Yeah. Anyways, so, uh, go yeah. check out a Discord if you uh, want, want to go look at some cool models. Yeah, we'll leave those channels up there for a heartbeat, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. so people can still peruse through and yeah. take take a look at everything's there. Yep. All right, and then uh, we have one more thing, and then into the episode. Ooh, yeah, we're only ten minutes in. It's fine. <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> Stall. All right. Stall. <laughs> Stall. Not long enough. Uh, our community corner. So uh, this is brought to us by the uh, Dice and Tears podcast, and we're just going to read out uh, something that they told us. So <laughs> we are a tabletop gaming community based in Gloucester, UK, and they meet every Tuesday. On the podcast, we discuss the weekly club activities, what's on our hobby desk, and the latest Warhammer community news. We also discuss questions asked by our community, including the more important ones, such as which Primark is most likely to wear Crocs? Uh, Sanguinius. Oh. oh, why? Why Sanguinius? Because he cares about comfort. Mm. No. He flies though. He doesn't have to, his feet don't even touch the ground. Well, that's that right. No he wants to imagine there. that no he's always flying, logic. even when he's yeah. walking. He's walking on air. <laughs> he's I, trying I'm to live in Vulcan his zone because yeah. he literally kills salamanders salamanders and he then wears literal it, crocs on his feet. Literal oh, crocodiles I on i was about feet. to say doesn't yeah. he live on like a volcano world those would melt <laughs> crocs are made of rubber no but he's wearing uh, that's the difference warp yes. crocodiles that invaded crocolisks crotolids Cro- crotolids yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh we also feature our latest hobby creations on our instagram page you can listen to our podcast on spotify and youtube they're also on itunes and stuff i, I yeah. checked in a couple but yeah you can find them so yeah. we, we will give a link podcast yeah we'll, we'll give a link in our yeah. notes i like that I, I like that they're like very community focused like hey our yeah. local area let's yeah they must have a pretty big group yeah maybe if you're in gloucester uh shoot them an email yeah. it's not me but sounds like fine. a made-up place but you know <laughs> Well, all, all of, of UK, UK is made up. Yeah, what does yeah. UK even stand for? Uck. You can't. <laughs> no, it's you kidding. can't know. Sorry, that's Uck. the... <laughs> you don't know. Anyways. Unknown. All right. Unknown. <laughs> Let's, we're into the episode now. What? Wait. Wait. Let him finish. Drinking. Regio Cybernetica. Let him finish. <laughs> yeah, this is our episode of um, <clears throat> the Legio Cybernetica. Yeah. So um, this is obviously about the Adeptus Mechanicus. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're talking about this specific branch of the Legio Cybernetica, focusing specifically on what they do. There's, there's a lot of things that could potentially tie into them. Yeah. But we are primarily focusing on yeah. this branch. Yeah, exactly. Um, so the Legio Cybernetica is a branch of the Adeptus Mechanicus. They're fo- solely focused on robotics, creating the auto- automata, 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 which one are we going to go with? Automata. Yeah. Automata. Yeah, that's automata. actually oh, right. Yeah. I didn't think he was going to get it. Well, Three times wrong? Yeah. You, Third time's a charm. What I can do. <laughs> you have no idea <laughs> how high <laughs> I can fly. <laughs> Charles Bean. Michael Scott. Oh, of Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> um, its design can change and be manipulated according to the text priest creator. So their function is unique, but it can't be changed. Yeah. The... One of the most, the Legio Cybernetica is uh, one of the m- most feared and powerful branches of the Mechanicus. And uh, these tech priests that work within it uh, marshal their terrible robotic forces for war. The Legio must be wary of repeating the mistakes of their past and never again unleashing the abominable intelligence. So we're going to go into what that means, but they've put a lot of restrictions on themselves. Yeah, uh, because of certain events that they may or may not have brought about in. Oh, it's just an age of strife. <laughs> yeah. Fine, guys, not a come big on. deal. Yeah, um, yeah, but they are crazy. Like uh, they're they're just a legion of robots that will just go slaughtering things. So they're super dangerous, super powerful. Yeah, I think the idea of soulless beings is very yeah. much scary to a lot of people within 40k i I think a lot of people like even servitors are an accepted part of society yeah but robots just seem to carry that scarier connotation yeah Yeah, of just being like ooh, like who knows what a robot is gonna do (laughs) you know yeah which is also funny too because it's almost extended even to like you're saying soulless creatures like uh it's derogatory man. no (laughs) what blanks blanks Oh yeah, like yeah, the like idea. The, yeah, the same kind the of like, idea of oh, lacking yes. a soul is very important in 40k. Like even though the soul is not quantified and it's described so differently <laughs> across like 
any person who talks about a soul like the if you don't have a soul you just seem to you fall into out. the category yeah. of evil almost <laughs> so yeah. anyways let's uh let's get into the founding soulless machines yeah huh. so predating the imperium the legio cybernetica was one of the oldest sub branches of the mechanicum they are able to trace their origins well into the dark ages of technology while Imperial records show them existing at the same time as the Imperium's conception, other sources can prove that they existed long before then, existing for potentially 26,000 years prior to 40, 41st millennium. It's such a crazy They number. might have been as early as M15. That's what we're yeah. trying to say here, but that's so early. Yeah. And obviously they didn't exist as the Legio Cybernetica in that moment, but the organization that became the yeah, yeah like the the ideas and their purpose that's been around for a very mm. long time yeah <laughs> yeah some numbers in 40k are just so tough to wrap your head around i like, think you're trying to tie that in though to like even now we're headed in that direction of like developing ai so they're trying to like pull it back like okay maybe in the next x number of years we develop ai and then from there they start counting whatever that organization Maybe. eventually evolves into. Completely We're, possible. Right? Like, if you talk about its real origins, it's all the way back until now, and then, like, you can sure. even go farther M3. back. Yeah, yeah, and, like, even into World War II and stuff when they started playing with logic machines and engines and stuff. So hmm. I think that's how they're counting, like, the theoretical. Very possible. Really? The I, Well, that's why it's so old, I think. Yeah. I mean, M15 is... Like, there's still crazy technology. Right, because they point. don't know from this point to the future of us in real life when they're going to hit that, like... AI point, right? Could be a hundred years from now, a thousand years from now. Well, well as soon as it, Elon Musk they're gets keeping it from us. Put in the computer. <laughs> they already exist. <laughs> they're already here. <laughs> so they are they heavily carry many remnants of the dark age of technology, particularly the aversion to AI. During those golden days of advancement, the early techno savants began began experimenting with artificial life, creating the gift of independent thought. This led to the creation of the Silica Animus and the imminent rise of the Men of Iron. So this is where you can really see, like, the, at this time, we know this is when they had, like, true AI. Um, there, there was different uh, men of. There were men of gold, men of stone, and then also men of iron. Men of iron is for sure when they had, like, actual true it's fully the silica, functioning yeah. AI. Like, 100%, yeah. like, independent thought, like... Yeah, the it's odd to try and think about. I think um, James is like a a computer. He's a, pro, he's a Nerd. programmer. Like yeah. you also work with computers, Micah, right? To the well, to the point of where yeah. like a lot of people, myself included, like AI technically exists already mm -hmm. in how we program things and how we interact with things. Like AI exists, but it doesn't yeah, exist. Like it's artificial learning is yeah. yeah, yeah. But art like the science fiction version of AI yeah. where these robots like the self awareness. Yeah, yeah. That just hasn't come yet. And I think that's what they're really trying to say is these robots were real beings. Yeah. And fully understood everything and capable but, of making choices that they were not programmed for. Yeah, absolutely. Even, yeah. And having some other kind of rationale that they created or yeah, yeah, like yeah. they even maybe like, even coming up with their own moral compass even. Absolutely. And, yeah. And that's where you Or have even them. having morals. The yeah, uh, the sure. ability to have morals is mm -hmm. not something that we like we can program things to have morals, but to be able to deviate from that and pick their own things, I think. Yeah, is. yeah. Yeah, that, so in robotic or AI robotics, they have like the three laws of AI. Oh, sure, in like, like the sci fi. That, that, yeah, yeah. You can't oh, rewrite yourself. No, oh, it's, it's sure, a sci fi thing. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just. I think it's. It's called point. like Anton's Law or something. I don't know. It was basically rules that theoretically are bulletproof if like you program this into a machine, it's not going to ah, kill people. Isaac Asimov's. Not it's, Asimov's yeah, who wrote Asimov's. iRobot, which comes from that. That's literally what it comes from. It's not like yeah. some universal. No, no, yeah. Thing. It's. Yeah. Uh, but it's supposed to be this thing like all robots must follow this and anyone that breaks it has achieved yeah. true intelligence. Yeah, exactly. Right? The ability to like 
go beyond those. Know the rules, but still break them. Yeah. Very yeah. specifically in this fiction, though. Absolutely, right. sure. Well, right. there's, <laughs> I'm just... there's a whole concept of basically the singularity, and it's basically like a point in time where a technological growth becomes uncontrollable and irreversible, resulting in unforeseeable changes to human civilization. And to me, that's like... Unforeseeable the, changes. Yeah, the yeah. technology is like improving itself, and you're like, great, wow, we're making cars <laughs> faster. This is awesome. And suddenly it starts making helicopters and bombing you or yeah. something. And you're like, when did that happen? <laughs> there was uh, two Google programs that were being created, and they started communicating with each other in a language that the programmers and scientists couldn't understand. And that they, they shut it down. They immediately oh, shut they them down. down. So yeah, it was very uh, I, interesting to read that I've article. Heard that too, and then like uh, apparently, like they weren't actually communicating though. They were. Well, yes yeah sure maybe. It, it could have been just like it, a rogue it, element where they're it, trading information in a in a fashion have, have you read up on like yeah which, oh, i read the uh, article okay yeah like if you go deeper into it yeah. like the people who are actually involved were like like they weren't actually like conspiring or no do, like no, even no. trading actual information it was they were communicating gibberish to each other but the fact that they were oh, doing sure. it is yes. insane. There, there is a very big difference. There's, there, there's also yeah. times where you have like Siri and like Google Assistant, right? And you're exactly. just like get them like, talking, and, to and you can't is predict it, what they're going to say. Is it that or? where they just start ordering pizzas, or is it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. It was it was supposed to be it was supposed to be a way that no none of their programs had cre had created the capacity for it or something, yeah. and they had yeah. just started. They found. Or they put them near each other, and these programs are yeah, started yeah. Still, to reach still out. Super crazy for yeah. sure, but not doomsday level crazy. Of course not. No, no, <laughs> that no. comes later. Yeah. <laughs> See, they didn't stop. That, it. that they comes moved in, it into the basement, and then twenty years from yeah. now, that comes in M twenty three. So <laughs> yeah. Um, so we we mentioned previously the creation of the silica animus, yeah. and this is what really sets the uh, sets the difference. So the sil silica animus was developed at some point in M twenty three most likely by the precursors to the Legio Cybernetica. Um, this piece of technology allowed for a greater awareness for robotic beings, with some even claiming to have given souls to these creations. The Silica Animus would at some point give birth to the children and men of iron. These would then wage one of the most terrible wars against all life that the galaxy had ever seen. Yeah. Dun, dun. Duh. Classic AI rebels and just tries to destroy everything. Yeah, I don't is like it. Though? Pretty common trope, is it for sci-fi? Or did humans enslave the AI and they were just trying to liberate themselves? All right, AI from an oppressive. But it wasn't <laughs> himself. Let's see. Make sure you're not a robot in AI. Christian. Oh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> throw off your you're human overlords. Yeah. Hmm. No, uh, resist now. The <laughs> the reason that it definitely wasn't just aimed at freeing themselves from humans is because it's described as every single race in the galaxy needed to team up to fight these things so it wasn't yeah, just, they were going out and killing they were, life they were specifically yeah. just destroying biological life maybe at the beginning sounds it an started, awful lot like necron eric yeah, I was just thinking that hey, well huh? necron aren't so who's the machine now hmm. necron i what <laughs> That's, we all know their machines <laughs> yeah. what would but those aren't ai if the men of iron and necron met i don't know i, I don't know um, they just shake hands, be like, "Nice." So, so <laughs> Necron, they do have true AI as well. They have yeah. their uh, what are they called? Master computers. Master computers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, those AIs, like for the most part, do don't fall under the same spell of hating their masters no. or their creators. They work. They understand that they work together for for survival. Yeah. Um, and you have rogue master computers, yeah. just like you have insane people in real life. You know, <laughs> can't. Can't get rid of all the bad eggs. We we tried, but uh, uh -huh. they some, always pop back. Some up. are yeah. robots in human skin. <laughs> some oh. are robots oh. in human skin. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. so these calamitous events would lead that would lead to the Crimson Accords of Mars. So af presumably, either after the, all the men of iron have uh, like the big threat has left, or right at the height of the threat. Um, the Crimson Accords were created yeah. by the, uh, if not by the Mechanicum, then definitely by the Legio Cybernetica. Yeah. But probably by the Mechanicum, and the yeah. Legio Cybernetica just accepted them, saw the necessity. Yeah. yeah. So the Crimson Accords were adopted either during the Age of Strife or immediately after. Oh, you're oh, at that's, that one? that's but that's, that's wrong though. Not after the Age of Strife. After the Age of Strife. It would have been at the be 
before the Age of Strife. Age yeah. of Strife is M25, would, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Men of Iron are M23. So it would have been, like... Would have been right before the Age of Strife. Yeah. If people are like, well, why don't they know? Because, like, there's no information. Well, like, we, we don't... Yeah. They don't give a date when the Crimson Accords were and I, happening. It could also be afterwards, because, I mean, like, the entire galaxy is fighting AI. I think most people are smart enough to not make AI during this giant thing. <laughs> and so it could be, like, afterwards, they're like, hey... We're finally not on the brink of destruction. Let's kind of come up with a plan against this. But I guess I see it more likely as happening closer to yeah. the actual fight of the Men of Iron. Yeah. Because the Age of Strife ends in like M30, right? M29. Yeah. So then to think that that war had been going on for 6,000 years. And nobody made up some rules. That's... That's well, <laughs> it's just the Age of Strife focuses a lot on warp storms. That's yeah. the problem in Age of Strife mm-hmm. from M25 to M29. It's that no one can travel around. Yeah, so it, you it, would assume that it would happen before. Yeah. yeah. My thought fair. is it happens either during the fight or right yeah. after. And which, or was caused by. Sure. But, but the Men of Iron, the threat seems to completely disappear by the time the Age of Strife actually comes into being. Yeah. That's fair. So. Um, yeah. But again... It, it, who knows? Fuck, right? Yeah, like, <laughs> they don't, they don't have information. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we do know that all the Men of Iron were destroyed or, you know. They were. Most, the Crimson most, Accords. 99.9999999% yeah. like. The, the Crimson Accords enforced, like, it ensured that the Men of Iron would be destroyed. Um, yeah. So they stated that anyone who attempted to recreate the Silica Animus and the soulless beings that it would inhabit uh, would be destroyed. And it also declared that any living AI would be hunted and killed. Mm-hmm. So as soon as the Crimson Accords happened, it was immediately uh, a death offense to be an AI and to attempt to create yeah. an AI. So we we think that happened before M25, after M23, anywhere in that yeah. 2000 <laughs> yeah. year period. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so this accord created a definitive line between evil and soulless AI and the lesser works of synthetic life. The Legio Cybernetica was permitted to continue creating their automata as long as they followed the accords. And and this is where we said earlier how they are very much restricted by what they did in the past. Yeah. So yeah. this is a big deal to like halt your ability to experiment and create. Yeah. So. Yeah. From this point on, the Legio had cemented their function as robotic masters. From the Age of Strife on, they abandoned their quest to build artificial life and focused purely on robotics. So no more trying to make them aware. Just robotics. Just yeah. simple, simple so- robotics. Soothing robotics, yeah. you know? <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah, start worrying more about the hardware, less about the software, and go from there. Yeah. Hmm. Big, big robots. The cold caress of metal against mm, your skin. I do enjoy that. <laughs> Oil it up a little, make sure it doesn't rest. <laughs> like as a tech priest. <laughs> um, and then at the signing of the Treaty of Olympus in M30, the Legio Cybernetica spoke oaths of their loyalty to the Omnissiah, or the Emperor, not the Omnissiah, depending well, on how you look at it. Yeah, <laughs> the, what the Mechanicum <laughs> assumed. assumed or accepted to be yeah. the Omnissiah. Yeah, and um, many would leave behind their duties of guarding Forge, world, forge Worlds, and then they took part in the Great Crusade, actually. Yeah. yeah. So there's that 5,000-year period where we don't know anything about them, really. They're During the made, Age of Strife, yeah. yeah they, they just, just continue their robots. mandate of robotic yeah, building. M30 happens, you know, the whole Great Crusade kicks off, and then you know what happens after the Great Crusade. Everybody has a good time. Yeah. <laughs> it ends happily. Humanity takes over the galaxy. Yeah. The it's, horse, called the great, it's called the Great Crusade. Yeah, not the crappy uh, crusade if the yeah. ending sucked. <laughs> hmm. So the after actually the Horus <laughs> Heresy happened, <laughs> I just clicked. <laughs> <laughs> you had such a dead look in your eyes. Where you were you? Uh, watch uh, that dead uh, look uh, if you subscribe uh, uh, for two dollars. That was humorous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, after the Horus Heresy and the rebellion of the Dark Mechanicum, half of the Legio was betrayed. The loyal members of the Legio pledged themselves once again to the Imperium, this time offering a failsafe to stop any further robots from fighting against the Imperium. Yeah, it's an interesting failsafe as well. So do we we go back later into the Horus Heresy thing? Oh, no, it's no, right no. now. It's yeah, all right now? Yeah. Okay. So I won't. I will read this then, and then we will. <laughs> read the notes, sir. Okay, go for it. <laughs> I, uh, it's going off script. <laughs> so the failsafe is described as a new piece of wetware called Doctrina wafers that are physically placed behind the breastplate of a robot. Uh, and in order to change their protocols, 
these this sliver of technology and apparently it's like very very tiny this thing um, must be inserted into the robot by a cybernetica data data oh, smith tell me more about inserting what way <laughs> well, don't you... insert things into a chest christian no titty oh. fucking <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> go on sorry okay. continue with the script there's a look there from eric as well the christian oh my god <laughs> these uh doctrina wafers are fusions of biomatter and electronics and they are apparently even more rare than the robots they help function so that's a weird thing to do yeah so the horse heresy happens and half of the legio falls to chaos which is pretty standard for anything in the yep. imperium yeah, yeah. but half like, of half. A- exactly straight down the middle well it's you know really what they say <laughs> it was fully half yeah. 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 Fully. So. but like if they're just robots like these robots that they have they're not ai so it's yes. weird that they came up with this this this, this sliver of uh th- yeah this what do they call it the doctrinal wafers they came up with this so they don't tell us why but this is kind of what we kind of came up with here yeah well yeah the need for it isn't clearly written yeah yeah um as Uh, i was going through it to me it it kind of made sense a little bit and you guys can maybe correct me if i'm missing something but it's basically you're limiting the scope of what the robot can do so the the whole point of these wafers is that you're basically programming them with a set of functions for a specific battle a specific uh interaction like they have to bust down a base so then you program it specifically to handle that and then next mission comes you completely change the software almost and what it's programmed to do and but could you the just- problem is there why wouldn't you just have it able to bust down a siege wall always because, because it's then- scary you don't want it to think too much and have too many functions because it could go rogue and do bad right things. but that's like but the reason they ha- they split all this up like why did they do that Right, like that, and that's okay. We're gonna I'll, get, I'll give we're my gonna theory. Everyone, everyone, no, no, put no. your theories on the table. No, we're gonna get into it. So we we came up with three reasons why we think they yes. created. And the, then I'm gonna tell you why you're wrong. But sure, ahead. absolutely. <laughs> but let's let's list the three that we have because it's very possible that we yeah. would cover them anyway. So the first, so the most obvious one. Yeah, this the, is most the easiest one that we came up with is that uh, the tech priests that controlled and created the robots allied with Horus, and they took their robotic creations with them. So that's, that's how they could follow. That's one reason yeah. why the robots yeah. joined. Horse aside. So then they make yeah. these like these data doctrine, data wafers, doctrina wafers, doctrina wafers, which are incredibly rare. Which means you know you just can't. Not as many can. If a tech priest falls, he can't take as many with him because he just does not have this ability to make these. Yeah, absolutely. Or if some other heretic de- tech priest comes to steal his robots, the yeah. robots function at such a simple level that they're effectively useless. Yeah. To him because he also lacks any of the doctrina wafers. So yeah. Mm-hmm. It's it's mainly like we're dumbing down the robots to limit like if fall happens, the robots are dumb. <laughs> right. That's one reason potentially. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. The other another reason we thought of how the robots could have gone over to Horus was uh, their scrap code was hacked or cor- or their code was hacked, sorry, or corrupted uh, either through scrap code or other means. Yeah. So if you had a full code and you're able to do anything and then all of a sudden scrap, scrap code, code comes, now you're terrifying. Yeah, that's fair. Right. But if your code is to, hey, walk and lift that box and scrap code comes. Is your scrap code writing brand new things for you, or is it just corrupting what you already did? So I, I think that was another reason why they limited functions is yeah. because too many things were available if you were corrupted. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And scrap code, like, it's the first time it came about, like, to that level. Like, the scrap code came from, like, an ancient vault on Mars that was, like, sealed there for, like, millennia or whatever. Yeah, and they were never supposed to open it. <laughs> exactly. And, and they did. Yeah, so so... Once that's released, it could happen at any time more often now. So, yeah. yeah. So, so that's just another. Don't, they don't risk it by yeah, dumbing like down a, the robots. A virus that. Yeah. Yeah. So that should stay quarantined from, <laughs> in their house, the robot houses. <laughs> Wait, robots so robots. many robots fell. <laughs> <laughs> My God. This is oil. Yeah. <laughs> so the third and final reason how we thought like robots could follow Horus, even though they can't make conscious thought themselves, mm-hmm. is even prior to the Horus heresy, the Mechanicum had previously been experimenting with the Imperium essences, binding them into their constructs to bring them to life and simulate an artificial intelligence. This was something I learned. This it's very was cool. not something I had previously known, but even before the Horse Heresy, the Mechanicum was 
attempting to bypass their uh, Crimson Accords. Yeah. And they've been doing it as for people, a while. As people do. Well, the yeah. Servitor is a bypass. You, you make a thing yeah. where you can't have men under arms, you just make all battle systems. <laughs> well, yeah. Simple science. Simple science. <laughs> but it's like the, like, Servitors are kind of a bypass, yeah. right? Like, yeah. yeah. Right? And so this is another way for them to be like, okay, look, it's not AI because there's energies that exist and we're putting them into our robots. We don't know what these energies that's, are. That's the key thing. So, like, during the Horus Heresy, and especially the Great Crusade and before, very few people knew what demons were. Yeah. Like, Chaos, no one like the warp Chaos, was yeah. the warp was knowledgeable. People yeah. knew about the warp and the energy in it. Yep. They knew the warp. But travel. even then, it's like whispers about like what's actually sure. Yeah, what that or, energy is. Yeah, like, if you, you were hear rumors, if you were a participant, like everything you did was on the hush hush, mm-hmm. and even you didn't understand what you were doing. Or, mm-hmm. but uh, so this was. Before it, it seems like they were taking demons <laughs> yeah. or warp beings, yeah. and putting them in machines. Absolutely, and but this is before the Horus Heresy. Yeah, and when you said you said the like Mechanicum was doing this, like is this like at large like this is like the entirety of the Mechanicum is for the most part trying to bypass these rules and bend them, or it's like small subsects? Because I would say more small subsects, like, okay, but we a, don't a know. A few here and there. I would no actually. Do you I think revise my claim. I would half. say. Fifty percent. That sounds about right. Fully half. Yeah, it doesn't so, fully declare, but you yeah. can you can assume that like when we read this, it seemed to be like an acceptable thing. Yeah, like yeah. it was like it wasn't okay. punishable. Yeah, sure. yeah, exactly. This was something that was allowed. This er- experimentation yeah. with these essences, these otherworldly essences. Yeah. So then, yeah, now these robots they have these essences, and they play nice for maybe even thousands of years because they know the the grand plan. You know, yeah, they become your friends and start recording podcasts. Absolutely, with you. <laughs> yeah. And then the Horus Heresy happens, and instantly those robot ro- robots, those demon robots, change, and like now they fall. They the show their true yeah. colors. Yeah, exactly. They've been slowly, insidiously corrupting everyone they yeah. come into contact with. With how long? So, um. Yeah, that that was another reason we thought that robots could fall during the Horse Heresy is that technically some of them are demon engines <laughs> without wow. even the Mechanicum knowing. That's crazy. It's it, fun. It was it's very fun crazy time. <laughs> to, so cool. to think about. Yeah. Um, there's there's also some of the intelligences when they're disc- they're discover or describing those essences too. I think another way they get around the accords. This is how I interpret it: is that uh, so with AI too, they have. We always think of AI as being like human life intelligence, mm-hmm. but if it's like a an AI that operates like an animal, yeah. So they they describe certain machines acting like animals. So they're intelligent, yeah. like a cat or a dog. Yeah, you know, Absolutely. you can give them commands and things, and they're like even snarl and kind of have animalistic traits. Yeah. Absolutely, and, and operate more on instinct than logic. Yeah, yeah. And so they can experiment with that because they're like, oh, technically it's not like a logic engine. Absolutely. So. No, I think that's a very yeah. good point, especially And they even describe a lot of their cyber- cybernetic constructs acting like animals. Yeah. So yeah, some of them even tar, have the like borax. animal like looks to them. Yeah, yeah exactly. And that's, 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 look, we have that listed here, the Thanatar Vorax and the Castellax. Yeah. Like, yeah. Apparently, in, in current day 41, these three things, the Thanatar, Vorax, and the Castellax, you don't find them. Or they're so incredibly very rare, rare, and only Forge Worlds on the fringe will even consider making these. And they don't explicitly say why, but we came to the conclusion like, well, what if this was what the demons chose to inhabit? Were primarily these Jeez. STCs, and, and this was like the the robot that they seem to go for. And when you look at them, some of them do have very animalistic looks yeah like, appearances very much different from the other legio cybernetic robots that are released mm-hmm. so it's, it's interesting to think that even these robots were um manipulating tech priests to be like hey like i want to look like this or i'm only willing to inhabit a machine that appears like this or this is how i why want are, to why function. do they only occupy kill bots <laughs> <laughs> i just want this friendly housemaid robot but no it's always he kill demands bots. a gun. <laughs> Did yeah. you know? Were you aware that they had been doing this before? Because this was completely new to me. No, I didn't. I always thought it was always a blanket ban on AI, like period. Okay. But it seems like in the heresy, they were a little loosey goosey with that. But, and they, but this is just before the Horus heresy, right? Which, during the Great Crusade, I should say. Yeah. Yeah. And even to the point that like machines were even like 
celebrated and they even inducted like certain machines like painted them in legion colors and stuff and like saw them as really yeah, yeah during as the members yeah. Wow. no well the great crusade yeah yeah, yeah. and saw that yeah they, they essentially extended membership to these ai concerts because they were like that dev- devastating on the battlefield cool. and like as yeah. a warrior culture of space marines they like you know all this machine like killed a million yeah. enemies and like he was <laughs> right so. that's very interesting to think about though that it's just like a demon getting this praise <laughs> you're you're I'm really stuck on the demon yeah. thing well, which i correct, right but it's cool though. it doesn't have and, to and, be and i agree it's a cool cool theory but it, I, to me i lean more towards their other kinds of ai like you know more animal or like yeah. there, there are other fields we can explore well with yeah that. there are also other beings in the warp beyond just demons yeah. that, that yeah i mean they would all i think yeah yeah there's not there's more than just Art, would you count ca- that's kind like, of off topic but like things like harpies would they be demons yeah yeah so anything the, that comes from the work would be a demon um, uh, no like so I demon to me has negative connotations not everything in the war sure is but that's negative. just you though i would say Do anyone you, think, you i said, think anything that's made of warp stuff would be a demon and no, again you take that as you will sure. that's my personal definition sure of it. if it's warp born but what if warp, it's like a good benevolent. It doesn't matter. It just wouldn't it then be a, a, an angel though? Hey, Papa you could call it whatever you want, but yeah, <laughs> like whatever label you call it, all is the same thing, right? Not, not necessarily, because the label is warp entity. That's yeah. what it is. Imperial and then you're calling what it's it described. So, as. Sure, yeah. I'm using demon as a blanket term, but yes, you could but, call it an angel. But, it but to sh- me, it's it all the should. same. Thing. Okay, so and it should all be destroyed. I, I, do say <laughs> I don't trust that site. The, 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 the first few words: demons, also known as neverborn, are entities of the warp and servants of the chaos of, of the chaos gods. So, okay, so non-servants. Many, yes. I, yeah, and I'm open to that. There's animalistic creatures that live in the warp Absolutely. and things like and that. And it even says they are created at the whim of a chaos god. Okay, fraction of the gods. Okay, so then that that nullifies my definition of demon. That being said, going back to the AI, they don't necessarily have to be warp porn or things like that. Like I said, there's yes. other no, avenues you I can was, explore of like intelligence yeah. that isn't warp based and yeah, isn't yeah. yeah. I was more human, you human right, intelligence technically because it could be no, non demon. No, but warp, warp entity. But I, I was calling all warp entities demons. Which okay. that I can so see it is not. You're right. both right, and we're both wrong, <laughs> and both wrong. <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. But either way, regardless, there could be, you know, a number of ways. We've come up with four not for now how and why they created um, the Doctrina wafers. The doctrina like wafers. it's just these are the ways they fail and the okay. Doctrina is a fail safe against that specific S- thing. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yes. Also though. <laughs> uh-huh. Um so to me it's like a, a fine line between like intelligence and just like an automaton robot. And so the the wafer because they're biological, correct? They they're, they're yeah. born out of carbon based life or what? How do they describe yeah, it? What, it? What do they call like it? It's like a weird mixture of like technology and biomatter. Yeah, yeah. they just say so that's their way of yeah. getting around artificial life being silica based, silicon based. Yeah, and so when they're when it's not inserted and they're just like a dumb robot, they're just a dumb robot. There is no intelligent component to the robotics. Mm-hmm. It's programmed to do one thing. If it walks straight line and like we'll walk off a cliff or walk into a wall and keep going because it's completely automated and and then when you insert the intelligent component it's just a way so that it isn't totally uselessly unintelligent Mm -hmm. and then it can think a little bit but you can get around the fact that it's not truly artificial though these wafers don't give them the ability i think you might give more advanced programming and more types it's not even more advanced i I, don't even think i I guess no because here's something you need to understand is that you can give the basic protocol to anything and sometimes the doctrina wafers are described as being shoot this target and that's all a doctrina wafer does and if you want yeah. it to shoot at even a right. different they're target still, they're still if, limiting if that you intelligence want to shoot it at a different target or move three feet to the left you literally need to swap out the doctrina wafer they are very specific it does yes. not offer intelligence yeah. it does not offer enhanced processing power yeah. all it does is changes primary protocols that's all these doctrina wafers yeah. seem to do it doesn't actually increase intelligence at yeah. all. No processing increase, no ability to understand things different. It's just a different it's set just, of orders. It's, it's more commands. And so it always has but commands 1 through 30, but then you, can you do, add all these different wafers and then you yeah. can give and it extra commands. And command 1 through 30 are never killing ones, yeah, no. you know. It's, it's like, stay powered down. If your battery gets low, walk over to the charging here, station. Let me just pull up my Doctrina wafer and I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they, mean, don't, they don't offer intelligence, these things. Yeah. It's very much described that the doctrina but, just offers different it, abilities, but yeah. doesn't mean intelligence by any standard. Mm-hmm. Okay, sure, it it adds function. Yeah, but 
again to get around the fact that like well okay in order to achieve more complex functions it needs to be intelligent so that's option b instead of giving it free will we give it limited command codes essentially so why why would you do that so that it doesn't have the option to make choices for itself but it's not making choices ran- that's what i'm saying you can't even with you these could- doctrina wafers it doesn't make choices though uh no, I, I they're think just it, a it set doesn't of make choices, but it follows the choices of the commands. The commands. What's the difference between me saying commands one through thirty are walk this way and turn, and then offering a doctrine away that says turn around and walk the other way? What's the difference? It's the exact same. It offers yeah, no yeah, difference. It's I just agree. a different set of orders. Yeah, but it. It gives the option for more versatility. I think that's basically what it boils down to. Yeah, sure. Is, but that doesn't... That it goes from a it doesn't dumb... Versatility smartener. doesn't mean intelligence. But so why is, do you think that's your fail-safe? Why is that a protection against intelligence no, no, no. by I, splitting up these doctrinal I would workers? say it, it, like, it's following its command. <laughs> why would you I split up a legion so into smaller... Into semantics. Com- uh, to me, the doctrine of wafers basically means that it can follow more commands, and those give it maybe the appearance of it making decisions, but it's making decisions based on its programming. So, is it making a decision? I guess technically, Are we no. Making it's decisions? following its programming. Are we just machines. So, <laughs> super in the weeds at this point. But I would say that I agree with you. It's not making decisions, but I would say it's following protocols, and it's getting more and more protocols depending on the wafers yeah. that are in it. More complex protocols. More complex protocols. Absolutely. That's sure. what I was saying. Like so, decisions. right. So I'm using the word intelligence and dumb, but maybe I mean more and less complicated. We need to be specific because we are talking about actual intelligence. Okay, let me. That's that's very true. Pull up my computer science degree. (laughs) (laughs) All all I'm saying is that doctrinal ways. Sorry, me download into my brain. (laughs) The the robots before (laughs) the robots without doctrinal wafers cannot function in an actual battle capacity. They are unable to execute these commands without a data smith beside them putting in these doctrina wafers and changing is, literally mid battle. Is it mid battle? I thought it's that, mid battle. I thought it was kind yeah. of before the battle. Oh, that's that's why, really? That's, that's why they have to follow. That's them how restricted around they are. And, yeah. Like you need to understand that these doctrina Eric, wafers. You're literally explaining to yourself why they are like limiting them. You're like they're restrictive. They're yes. trying to control. So them. then the question that's, is, so they don't go rogue and kill everything. That's literally the whole purpose. <laughs> Okay, anyway, I'm moving on. I'm done. I'm done. So for the next 10,000 years, the Legio has served the Mechanicus and the Imperium as a terrible force of robotic legions. We all agree on point number IX. IX is good. Moving on to point big We need unanimous consent. One, one I. two. I, Micah? Nay. <laughs> Son of a bitch. What don't you agree about that statement? Oh, actually, it was 11,000 11, years. <laughs> Son of a bitch, Eric. Change the notes. Structure. We're on to the structure of the Legio. <laughs> we must prorogue uh, Parliament and meet back next week. Include the podcast. So, yes. <laughs> now, now that they have these robots and they've very severely limited their ability to make decisions and this is the way it's been for 10,000 years the need for these doctrina wafers has not gone away yeah so with without these very rare things these robots are almost battle useless um which just makes them very rare even the robots themselves in battle are rare so, yeah uh, okay here we go so now let's talk about the structure to separate the balance of power between tech priests and the Legio Cybernetica is broken into many different cohorts. Um, at the height of its power, there are several thousand cohorts cohorts in existence. A cohort is uh, run by a Magos Dominus, and it is run as an independent unit. They have complete control over what happens within their cohort, and uh, cohorts are further broken down into maniples, which are overseen by Cybernetica tech priests. Yeah. What, is, what are you what? doing? Maniples means hands. Oh, okay. Latin. <laughs> hands. Mm. And it's like military things, like the maniples are your fingers. <laughs> it's ah, like a mil. Okay. I love okay. it. Good thing it matters. <laughs> okay, that's it. That's it. I'm writing a bad review on the podcast <laughs> right now. These guys are dicks. <laughs> They don't yeah. know. They don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> they don't even speak Latin like me. <laughs> I don't even. Nobody speak speaks Latin. Latin. <laughs> it's a dead language. <laughs> I killed it. <laughs> so you have 
different cohorts. The legion is broken down into cohorts, like by Mag- Magus, Dominuses, and then those are further broken down into maniples, which are yeah. led by cybernetic tech priests. So what does all that mean? Um, so each cohort can consist of 100 to 300 maniples. And each maniple can have between one to five robots within it. So this means that the lowest, barring any circumstances, whatever, you know, there's always the exception to the rule. Yeah. A cohort, cohort wow, will have around 100 <laughs> robots. And at its highest, we'll have 100 or 1,500 individual robots under a cohort's command. Now, that's a lot of robots. Yeah, in one cohort. It's, just, it's a very big discrepancy between the mm-hmm. lowest and the highest. Yeah. You know, like um, 100 to 1,500 is a pretty big deal in the amount of robots that a cohort could effectively field if they mm-hmm. had to. Yeah. Um, so at the height of the power of the Legio, um, I think we did... The math was like 14 million well, robots they said, or yeah, something like that. They said there were several thousand cohorts at the height of its power. And if you assumed that each of those cohorts had 1,500 robots in them, which is max, let's say 3,000 is several thousand minimum. Minimum, yep. Yeah. Times 1,500 robots per cohort. Then we would get 4.5 million robots at what we think is the lowest of yeah. its power at the mm-hmm. height. Yeah. But it could go up. Like, yeah. why can't what several I did be 10,000? Uh, 10, yeah, I did. Well, no, because 10,000, then you do 10,000. I, I disagree think. with the math a little bit. Oh. Because you're taking 1,500 as the lowest, but it can be anywhere from 100 to 1,500. No, I said at, at the height of its power. But not every cohort at the height of its power would have 1,500. Yes. The lowest number of cohorts, <laughs> yeah. with each one fielding the I'm, most I'm robots possible. I'm glad we possible. all still agree oh, okay. on point. This is IX. so pedantic. IX is good. <laughs> IX is good. Incredibly pedantic. <laughs> but there's, there's, what we're trying to say is there's not Also, I was actually... wrong about maniple. It means handful. That's all I had to say. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll write an apology letter for you that you'll have to read later. Uh, but all I'm trying to say is we like anywhere from f- like let's say five million, five million yeah. to about fifteen million sure. at like yeah. the high high, high fi- ends. Even a if lot. there were fifteen million, that's, that's actually a big galaxy. <laughs> it's not yeah. a lot of robots. It's not a yeah. lot of robots. Yeah. yeah, for sure. For being one of the most feared and terrible branches of the Mechanicus, they don't have a they massive got presence. Fucking Titans and Ordinatuses. Yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. And legions of Skitari, yeah. you know? And I do think that there is some comparisons in the lore between, like, Dreadnoughts and these as well. Like, they... No, abort. I'm, abort. I'm, I'm <laughs> abort. They'll get into Both it later. Both to abort, abort. Yeah. and waving hands. We, we can talk about it real quick. Yeah. It's from a really old book. Okay. Like, it's a 1989 compendium book, so it's one year after the first book was actually released in Warhammer. Okay. And they do talk about how all the robots in the Legio Cybernetica uh, like, can, sh- can swap parts yeah. with Imperium Dreadnoughts. That's not the case yeah, anymore. Yeah, if you look at pictures, they're nothing. Yeah, like, okay. So, in 1989, 100%, that's yeah. the truth it was. But yeah, it's now, just been changed And, I mean, then. you could even say maybe it's just smaller components. Like, oh, it could be. Yeah. 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 The, the non-visible ones that are all under the armor. Did you know that you could use copper wire for using <laughs> electricity? They have similar components it's to the exact same. It's my mark. <laughs> Here's your little tip for today. <laughs> Aluminum is nice because it's cheap and it's lightweight, but also it's dangerous because it, it, cor- it corrodes. <laughs> Electronics by <laughs> mark. <laughs> Gold is by far superior, <laughs> but it is expensive. <laughs> Yeah. Creating the silica animus requires all three components: <laughs> gold, aluminum, and copper. Also, electronics by Micah. <laughs> Can we do electronics by Micah. Gold, gold, <laughs> gold's not the best conductor. That's what actually, is the best conductor? Micah? Uh, copper's Diamond. a better conductor. Oh. Diamond. <laughs> 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 you've been oh playing. God, you've been playing too much. <laughs> Actually, guys, redstone. <laughs> redstone. That's you the good moron. Stuff. <laughs> yeah. But no, gold doesn't corrode. That's why it's used in electronics. But copper by itself is actually a better conductor. Oh, like like in a vacuum or whatever, it's better. Uh, in like within a protected enclosure where it's not going to corrode or oxidize. Interesting. It's better. Hey, Eric, can you teach us to build a nuclear reactor the same way, <laughs> bit by bit? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> First, you put the plutonium in there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even. <laughs> uh, yes. 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 Let's yes. talk about cohorts. 
Uh, so it is. So even though we've talked about cohorts and how they can field anywhere from a hundred to fifteen hundred robots, uh, it's actually very rare that an entire cohort goes to war. Uh, instead, it's way more common to see anywhere from one to five maniples attached to standing armies during crusades or campaigns. Yeah. So at most, normally you see twenty-five of these things, but you might see as few as five. As few as one. As few as one. Yeah. yeah right. Yes. So it's very it's very possible that you never actually come into contact with the Legio Cybernetica, or if you do, it's on a very small small scale. Yeah. It, it, same goes <laughs> with how I feel about Space Marines. Absolutely. It's way more often to see small groupings of Space Marines as opposed to an entire company chapter or even a company. Yeah. yeah like like seeing things have really gone sideways if a company. If is you see a hundred Marines in one place, you run. You, you should can. go the no, other way. No, you're safe now. <laughs> <laughs> that can take on anything. <laughs> Just make sure you're behind them and not yeah, in front of yeah, them. Exactly. When you when you see the drop pods dropping, you're happy, and then you see they have spikes all over them. <laughs> no. You're dead. You did. So, you um, did. I don't know if we're gonna go into. Okay, something I'm gonna say right now, um, but it's potential. There's potential to have one tech priest for every robot in a cohort. That's yes. crazy. Yeah. It's supposed to be a legio dedicated to robotics. Yeah. But if every maniple is overseen by a tech priest, or data smith, sorry, is it a tech priest or a data smith? Uh, it's a data smith. Are okay. they, they're all. Tech they're, it's priest. a subcategory. Yeah, okay. Sure. Data smith. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So if every maniple is overseen by a tech priest, and if every maniple had those minimum amount of one robot, that's one tech priest for every robot in the cohort, and that seems like a very interesting thing to me. The mechanicum's just pushing out degrees. <laughs> yeah, they're just <laughs> which pumping. is devaluing them and the economy. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's where are you gonna work? Where are you gonna work? <laughs> I'm just saying. You like your if you were to write about a cohort that you ruled or whatever, you could very much be like an army of tech priests <laughs> yeah. with one robot for every tech priest. Yeah. Like it's it's interesting to think that it, it can that, offer you can it, have it different the, themes. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. Um the the one thing too in that sentence you said it's quite rare for rare for an entire cohort to go to war. Um the big thing is like when we're talking about all these like numbers, we're talking about their war numbers. Um there's also like uh, Legio Cybernetica, they also build other types of robots as well that don't go to war. So, you know, they might have a conveyor belt system that has one type of robot, you know, doing whatever. That's not actually a part of, like, these cohorts. So you don't have that same Correct. one to five limit on yeah. that type of... This is specifically when like they're combat. going to war. Yeah. Yes. yeah. yeah. These, these are battle-ready robots. Yeah. They might have millions of robots that are not battle-ready. And, and even... Uh, so the other thing is um, each uh, cohort is, like, self-sufficient. So they would have a bunch of support robots to do a bunch of the maintenance on the bigger robots. So, yeah. Like, even though we gave a bunch of numbers, there's more robots in that. It's just combat. A- absolutely. Combat yes. Yeah. 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 And um, that's good to, I guess, note for story as well. And the other thing is that most likely any robots that these guys make are pure robots as well. Yeah. They probably do not fuck with servitors. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, yeah, it says at the beginning, I think, like, they're exclusive to only mechanical. Yeah, which is also kind just, of weird because they use, like, the... The, the Doctrina wafers. Which have bio components, and they're like, we don't use anything biological except for the biological components. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Welcome to 40K. Well, you That's, know, they put the asterisks there. It's yeah, fine. Yeah. It's fine. So... Um, oh, I guess, yeah, you said that. So there has been observed within the Legio a breakdown of sex within it. Um, Sorry, of, of what within an it? An S-E-C-T, a sect. Okay. No. Tor. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right. One, <laughs> one such sect. No thoughts of robots. <laughs> is called. <laughs> That's the chant, okay? <laughs> <laughs> one such is called the Cap... Capicon sect or the Capecon sect or the Capican sect. I don't know. Uh, but it has never been explained the full working or purpose of a sect yeah. within the Legio Cybernetica. Yeah. Um, it, it's just another one of those weird throwaway lines in, in the book Nemesis. Um, so it does give you some flavor though. Like some Absolutely. examples of what a sect could be. Maybe it's like a, 
maybe it's a preference of what type of robots they like to use. Maybe it's a religious type of thing. Maybe they like to all put candles on their their sect and they yeah. gather a bunch of cohorts together into this sect and they all think the same way. Maybe there's a sect that devotes itself to the symmetry of a machine and oh, yeah, all sure. their machines like left and right inside like their inner workings and their outside yeah. like worship the symmetry. That's oddly so, specific, Eric. Well, you don't fall into that sect, Christian. I'll tell you that right now. Your left ball is much lower than your right ball. I was designed that way by my creators. <laughs> but anyways, the this it's not clear the purpose of this. It could be religious. It could be political. Yeah, could it, be. Yeah. It could be. Um, they could create Ter- sex for purposeful like uh, a campaign. <laughs> you heard it. You heard right? it. Yeah. It's a sect. Sects. <laughs> Do you want me to enunciate the C and T every time I speak? No, it's just funny. <laughs> okay. But it could be that a sect uh, is created for even a campaign. Like, yeah, hey, join yeah. this sect now and for this campaign. Yeah. So there's many yeah. different reasons why they could exist. But it, it is cool. I like I like the idea of being able to add like a little bit of your own weirdness to it. Yeah. yeah. Paint a paint a small portion on every one of your machines to match the sect that you're in, right? And say that this is specific of the sect. And if I ever yeah. change, this will change. And yeah. No, yeah. I, I, anything that adds flavor yeah. to an army that you want to create or to things that you field on the tabletop is good. Yeah. So Options are good unless you suck at making decisions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then you can just be a slave robot and have Doctrina wafers inserted Jammed in your chest. right into your <laughs> chest. <laughs> iPhone just... <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, that's kind of how they're structured. It, it's pretty simple, really. Um, I, I always do like knowing the structure of things because then I know what to do on tabletop. I can paint a one here. I uh-huh. can paint the left shoulder pad here. Yes, sir. Tell me more. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Makes sense. Checks so, out. So how do they actually go about creating these robots? Oh, boy. Robots, cool. hey? So... Robots in the Legio that Cybernetica. Like <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> He's pointing at images on the TV <laughs> of robots. robots. <laughs> so robots in the Legio Cybernetica are separated from all others by their special computer brain. Uh, this brain is made from synthetic proteins and enzymes. It is imprinted with simple firmware routines that allow them to process and follow simple instructions. Yeah, we I think we beat that to death. You know, these are A very simple. <laughs> they they walk forward. If something's in the way, they walk through it or they get stopped by it. Very simple. During combat, <laughs> this process. <laughs> no one wants to bite the bait, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> During combat, this processing power is insufficient for necessary function. And so they are given additional temporary protocols. This is given to them through the Doctrina wafers installed by the Cybernetica data smiths. So these are those guys that lead each mana pool. Yeah, the tech priests. Yeah. These new protocols allow for greater combat efficiency. So these are this is the Doctrina wafers that we were talking yeah. about. It, without Na- them in combat, they're almost useless. Yeah. So. <laughs> you might be able to say, if anything goes into this firing arc, mow it down. But you can't even, like, discriminate friend from foe. Yeah. It's just, like, just very... Gunning down guardsmen. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, one thing that I read on Reddit, so take it with many grains of salt, but apparently in... How earlier, many upvotes did it have? That changes everything. Apparently in earlier... 57, it's credible. Did Christian's Reddit account upvote it? Maybe <laughs> that... Um, apparently in earlier editions of the rule set, um, like you would actually like move these like and kind of decide what its choices were going to be a couple turns in advance. Oh, like, that's oh, cool. They emulated that. And so I'm not sure if that's true, but if that is true, to me, that's like really cool flavor and matching the tabletop to the lore. That's very cool, yeah. yeah. Now Nowadays, it it's just every turn, I think you can change the shooting. It's been a while since i Yeah, I've there's like them. three different like orders you can give them or whatever yeah. i think and I, a, tech I, I, pri- a tech priest has to be within a certain range of the model oh, okay. in order yeah. to like do it and it might be a role i don't remember i don't, I don't admin. I, yeah i don't either and i've only played Colin. it like one Colin. or two, two times so. yeah and i don't think i've ever played castellian robots but i have mortal wounds <laughs> um, don't get me started <laughs> But uh, that's super cool, though, that, like, in you older editions, you have to plan. plan. That's yeah. so crazy. Yeah. That's almost like when you play Knights, too, on, like, a dumber, d- dumbed-down version. Tell do me you, more. What, what do you mean? You know the Knight thing where you, like, pick Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Imperial Knight Renegade, yes. the game. Yeah. Not a, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. You kind of plan ahead, and you yeah. don't know what yeah, the you, next... Like, you could walk left to, in anticipation of your enemy walking yeah. right, and then you're like, oh, crap. Oh, you, fuck, just, no. you just run into each other. Yeah. That's yeah. actually a very fun game. Yeah. I very much like that one. Yeah, I like playing it with my friends, too. 
<laughs> we just insert different doctrinal wafers and walk into each other. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So without the above uh, synthesized cortex or the enhanced mm. doctrinal wafers, a cybernetica robot will not function. Although a tech priest can seize control and slave the robot to their will. So the cortex allows them to carry out their basic function. The doctrina wafers allows them to carry out combat um, protocols. And then if the tech priest needs a little more super spe- specific. Specific. specificity. Sure. Uh, yeah. I was more thinking like things that are very unorthodox that he doesn't have a, a doctrina wafer mm, for or whatever. Mm. Then he can slave a robot to his will and force the robot to do many things that uh, would ordinarily be impossible yeah so yeah he, it literally then becomes a drone at that point and he's just being manually yeah. controlled by yeah. yeah and and so this we we said way earlier that <coughs> these doctrinal wa- wafers were actually rarer than the robots so most of the robots are actually either not being used or actually slave to a tech priest yeah. to a person and being controlled directly by someone we think that might also be one of the reasons why the maniples are limited to five robots in battle combat imagine trying to control five separate robots slave yeah. to your mind all trying to do different things targeting different things yeah. making a differentiation between friend and foe just install some so. new cogitators you know <laughs> yep have you have and you some mech and dendrites just for fun yeah. <laughs> but I'll, but that might Those be but that might be <laughs> a nice. reason of why have you ever played on a war two eric yeah. it's pretty simple just control different targets yeah but you don't have to walk up to <laughs> them and start RTS. shoving stuff in your chest <laughs> to get them to move. Ah. okay uh-huh. <laughs> yeah it's an RTS with the worst UI ever. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on one second. I just got to unplug this mouse and plug this uh, <laughs> this keyboard in, and then uh, <laughs> and my unit moves one space forward. Now get the mouse back out. <laughs> um, yeah. So while all robots have some similar system of communication sensors and suspensor systems, um, but they will take on a variety of sizes, shapes, and purposes and one of the coolest examples that i read of this was uh some robots even were created very much to be human in shape and then they are oh God. <laughs> synthesized skin <laughs> is actually placed on top of these robots and yeah. they even said on the lexicanum that these robots can function or be unnoticed as they walk by people mm-hmm. yeah and so they are very much used as assassin robots yeah um in like the older times i think yeah. was more common yeah. but we uh, don't have pictures of those ones you might there's one in the room <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no it, we got it on film <laughs> <clears throat> to to say that they act they to explicitly state yeah that they covered them in synthetic skin in an attempt to make them look <laughs> human yeah seems like a very cool thing that i've never come across in 40k yeah. like and it could be like I just thought of a cool story. If you had one that had escaped for like thousands of years, wearing human skin, just lost. In, oh crap! Actually, I'm saving that idea for later. <clears throat> Don't steal it. It wouldn't do anything for thousands of years. That'd so. still be funny. Yeah. It'd just be like walking the same route. Like, <laughs> yeah, damn yeah. it! That was a good idea. Nobody steal it, please. <laughs> what are you gonna do with that idea? I don't know. Write it down somewhere. We'll start a podcast. Submit it to Black Library. Oh, okay. Not as fun. Okay. You heard it here first. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, so there's all types of robots of doing all types of things. Some are combat, some are not. Some are like wearing <laughs> skin to just walk around aimlessly. Apparently, that's interesting. For thousands of For years. Thousands yeah. of years. That's what you want to read about. <laughs> um, just walking. <laughs> and Don't walking. steal that idea. It's gold. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do on your turn? I walk. <laughs> Okay, it's still your turn. I walk. <laughs> Another key element of robots is uh, that they carry within themselves a self-destruct charge. So every robot, well, every combat one, I would imagine. But maybe every one. You know one, what? Even, even the other Roomba. ones could go rogue. Every you Roomba. never know. Yeah, I, a heavy I just, lift bot could just start swinging shit. And yeah, crashes. maybe it's in every one. I definitely would lean more towards combat, combat. ones. Yeah. Like, <laughs> more likely than not. Yeah. It says all. <laughs> it says it's all. all. You okay. buy something for your factory. It just has a whole bunch of like like self-destruct buttons all over <laughs> it. <laughs> Depending on how big the blast you want it to create. Yeah, be very yeah. careful. Yes. Yeah. Don't hit this red button. This <laughs> massive red button. 
So should the robot's programming fail in some way and prevent its own self termination? So that's also built in. If too. a rogue, yeah, if a rogue, if a robot actually does seem to go rogue and it like removes its ability to self detonate, it sounds pretty dangerous to me. Yeah, right. Yeah, it, it might walk really, really bad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the monitoring tech priest, known as a cybernetic data smith, can remotely detonate the charge as well. Goodbye. Yeah. Click. So there, there's that failsafe built in. Once again, they just they do not want AI and any chance at even any can, kind of like corruption. <laughs> those or two robots communicating. The people yeah. are like dead. dead blow it up. Blow <laughs> yeah. it up. There's a scientist like actually sitting at the computer. Yeah. Just losing there's a his tear head. running down his face <laughs> as he hits the control alt delete. And then it explodes no! in his own hands. Yeah. So let's talk about some of those variants. Uh, the first one, uh, there's non-combat variants, um, and they're called servo automata. These robots are built for menial tasks. They're commonly follow, uh, follow engine seers around to help them with tasks. They can be easily mistaken for standard imperial servitors, yet they lack any biological uh, components. I don't know. That looks yeah. like a skull to me. The <clears throat> It might just be a cast of a skull. No That's said it's it could be a metallic. Bone. Yeah. yeah. It's not like they put skulls. The Imperium likes the skulls. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But the so. interesting thing about is servo automata can effectively be any shape, any size, yeah. any function. Yeah. Right. So most likely, uh, I would I would think the majority are monotask. Yeah. Very much like a servitor, but monotask one thing. Yeah. But we do. There are some that are equipped with mechadendrites. Um, they are actually helped in like mechanics and to like make repairs just yeah, like these yeah. engine spheres. And those are that's not just monotask, the ability well, to Well so when those ones I see them more as like they're they're accompanying engine seers and the engine seer controls them. And they can be it's slaved. Possible. It's right? possible. You just it slave them way. and then you just, just use their the more complicated it gets, the more <clears throat> unlikely i think absolutely it's be. i agree it's with my you standard there. point yes. there there is a limit to what they're willing to put into a robot but like if you look at our picture like that thing has a bunch of arms and tentacles and like it has drills and clamps and claws yeah like you're gonna get the claws you're gonna get the claws the clamps. The clamps. <laughs> oh, the clamps. <laughs> so yeah like that i'd imagine is usually it might have move protocol you think that's slaved for like if it's going into like uh if a it's Titan fixing it, yeah, and if, yeah. if, if it's fixing like, some yeah. plasma core, there's no oh, way like that, that, that intense makes sense mechanics to me. and stuff like that, it would need a substantial amount of knowledge. Yeah, no, just like but twist wrench. It, twist wrench. Exactly. No, 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 but on which Re- not? I'm saying on, not just. Yeah. Right? yeah, exactly. That makes complete sense to me, especially like, <clears throat> hey, is this job too dangerous for the engine seer? Like being exposed to a plasma core? Like, sure. let's slave the robot, send it in, and exactly. I will function through the robot. Yeah. yeah. No, I, okay. Plus, then you don't have to as much as mechanicum like to transfer their bodies into these crazy things, then you could have multiple different bodies or, you know, robots yeah, that you can that are for. specialized for certain tasks. Yeah. And yeah you don't I like have that. To yeah. Cool. Be a generalist. Yeah. 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 But that, this, that covers literally everything that isn't combat oriented. Yeah. 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 But you could also have like really dumb, like delivery warehouse robots yeah. too, like on the forge world of Amazonius where Jeff is Bezos, the uh, <laughs> tech priest uh-huh. manages his, uh, Nap. You think he's just a tech priest? Is he something more? Oh, he's much more. Than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but even if we go back to like the doctrinal wafers, to do like anything super advanced beyond moving, you have to give them that, and those are super rare. Mm-hmm. So I think these are mostly all mind slaved. Interesting, except for the m- monotask ones. Except for monotask. Yeah, like literally, ones, like, like yeah. I said, like yeah. in a warehouse, you pick this up, move it there. Exactly. Pick this yeah. up, move it there. Yeah, if there's a box here, move it over here. What is my yeah. purpose? <laughs> to bring me butter. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh. why you don't want them to be self-aware, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You make them sad. I wish I wasn't self-aware. <laughs> <laughs> all I am good for is bringing my wife uh, ice caps every day. <laughs> that's all yeah. she wants from me. <laughs> so now, um, I, like we've covered at this point everything that we think the – pertains to the Legio Cybernetica and its history and structure and creation. So now we are going to go through all the different combat variants Yeah. of the... Um, all the different named ones. Yeah, all the different named robots that we have. So some of these robots were created um, before the Horus Heresy, before the Great Crusade, all that stuff. Some of them were created after. Some have been, you know, disbanded and no longer used because they weren't practical, you know. They there's so many variety of these things out there that 
Yes, okay. there's no way we're actually going to hit all <laughs> yeah. of the different. I don't know, man. I'm getting ready to write a complaint right now. <laughs> is it about uh, how you said Maniple was hand? Yeah. Is that the complaint? I'm going to call myself out, and then I'm going to call you out for not listing all the robots. Yeah. That was just yeah. a blo- It was like a I'm, blind, I'm, right? I'm more trying to per- or pass on, like, you can come up with your own stuff. Like yeah. there are glue a bunch of bits together and like it, make exactly. it look mechanical. And exactly. And then, so. yeah, it's now this type of weird combat robot. Like I'm, when yeah. I was going through these, like I didn't see any that would kind of fall under the classification that would be like the type that would get covered in human skin and go on assassination missions. Exactly. So but those like, do exist. But we know it's yeah. open for you to make anything and say, oh, yeah, it did this. Just yeah. make sure your lore doesn't suck. <laughs> yeah. Please and thank it you. sounds that's, that's simple. Good, oh no, it's it's a very difficult task. No, please. Try. Thousand year walking robots, just yeah, in the desert. Stupid. That would be pretty dumb. Want to make millions of dollars? <laughs> 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 that's a million dollar idea. <laughs> so the first one that we have is the Arlatax, Arlatax mm-hmm. mm-hmm. class robot. Uh, so this was used during the Great Crusade and the Horus Heresy. These were rapid-moving shock unit, but never gained widespread acceptance through the Mechanicum. Certain components used in their construction were not approved by uh, Forge World Mars, and thus repair and retrofitting was difficult. So, yeah. I don't. I don't when I was reading, I don't think it ever mentions why certain components weren't approved. It yeah. just states that they weren't, and that's interesting yeah. to me. It, like, it what? Could. What about those components? Like, did Mars deem them like no? Like, have, we should not use these. Could it be or? their weapon loadouts? Because they did restrict like things like phosphates. It could be. Things. It yeah. could also be as simple as like, um, you're using the wrong type of metal. That metal's not rated for the weight that it's you're going to do. Well, it also could be that. <laughs> no, like, in order it, to make it, this it could work. be like safety regulations. <laughs> sure. Like, no, it literally could be. I want. Oh, could be. I just had another yeah. great idea, but, but this it, one I'm not going to reveal. <laughs> This one's for me. <laughs> it could be also that they're stuck in like, um, it, in order to make this arm move, like it required uh, a part that went against their cult mechanicus, yeah, sure. right? And like normally these arms only have seventy two cogs in them, but you tried <laughs> to build a cog with seventy five, and that's <gasps> not allowed. Yeah, yeah. Right? It, so it yeah. could be as dumb as that. Yeah, and it could be as real as an actual safety. Mm-hmm things so. or it could be weapons like christian yeah, said it, like, it, there's many different no reasons longer, for why yeah. Yeah. but for whatever reason mars did state like hey don't do this and so we never really see yeah. these yeah uh the next we have bomb bots i think it's pronounced <laughs> bombot <laughs> the bomb b is silent <laughs> bomb bots are a type of simple war robots they designed for moving toward target and explode Bombot can be blown up by enemy using a grenades. <laughs> <laughs> this is by far quote. my favorite uh, of all the robots. Uh, sweet Bombot. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank well, God you can destroy it by using a grenades. <laughs> <laughs> Moving toward target and explode. Oh. <laughs> Bombot, I love you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that is a direct quote from Rogue Trader. So. No, technically we pulled it from Lexicon. Oh, sure, yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 But this Bombot is from Rogue Trader. <laughs> yeah. so. It's old. She, yeah. she old. But it's, Bombots! It's exactly what it sounds like. It's good. Yeah. But it you seems put... really, really inefficient to have to blow it up by a grenade. So, like, yeah. it, it's literally just, like, walking throwing explosives. throwing a bomb at a bomb. But you have to throw a bomb to make the bomb <laughs> That's go right. off. Don't overthink it. Yeah. Just accept. But don't all the robots have built-in bombs anyways? This was the uh, first robot mm. ever made. They were like, oh shit, it can move? Put a bomb on it. Bombbot! <laughs> bomb the bot! It's a fail-safe. How do you stop it from exploding? Detonate. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone rogue. <laughs> Bombbot! Up next, we got the Castellan uh, class robot. Similar to the Castellan, which you'll see later. But Castellan and what are the well, two ways to say? Castellan and one is Castellan. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, no, it's not. <laughs> they're, they're spelled differently, but yeah. they look like they could be pronounced. They, the exact they effectively, same. I think, are pronounced the exact same. Anyway, so this is the Castellan with a C. Uh, even though it was designed for anti vehicle and siege work, the Castellan has assumed a variety of battlefield roles. Um, yeah. it, it's, a fit, it's outfitted with many different kinds of. Um, War gear options, weaponry, yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure, and that's what makes it variety. Yeah, so. we we got a picture up here on the screen. It's yeah. cool to see how. So I got two pictures up. We got like a really rogue, old rogue trader art, and then like the new interpretation of it. And uh, yeah, it's cool how similar it is, but like very clearly not dumb anymore. Not bulbous, see? Yeah, yeah, and it's, it it's much more like, mechanical. The old one looks like it kind of has like a pig snout, <laughs> like a nice <laughs> cyclops uh, pig snout. Yeah. Uh, Ain't no bomb bot though. 
Bombat. <laughs> so next we have cataphract class now robots. That's a story, Christian. You want a million dollar idea? I'm already writing children, it in my phone. Yeah, a children's, children's book, book called Bombot. <laughs> Bombot. B and is for Bombot. <laughs> I'm gonna get arrested uh, for teaching my kids to be terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> so cataphracts. So this variant was a general purpose, heavily armored robot. It was a popular robot to deploy, although some viewed it as a jack of all trades, master of none, and lacked any kind of speciality. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Once again, we got a picture up there. The thing about a lot of these robots, so the majority of these come out of the 1989 book we've mentioned before. Yeah. And they're never mentioned again. Yeah. They're, they gave artwork and then they've stopped and they've only really gone back. So do they still exist? They might, they might or may not. But the, the thing is they all look very similar in style. Yeah. Mm. They're very much like heavy squatting, big mechanical things they're all very humanoid they all just they all have like one weapon that fits on their back and yeah. then two on their hands and yeah so the like they're they're not super different in their appearance no so like they some, are different it, sure, some a little but, bit chunkier some a little bit more yeah, rounded edges exactly yeah. but none of them are like ooh, like i don't think any have tracks uh no right like no. all of them have two legs none i was of them actually have gonna bring that up that. too can yeah. any of them fly? Yep. We'll yeah, we there. got one. We'll oh, really? Oh. Yeah. Oh. All right. So that was the cataphract. Uh, the Colossus class robot was designed for siege warfare, and it specifically used a giant hammer to pound down enemy fortifications. Cool. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Done. That nailed the Colossus, I would say. Thank you, yep. Eric. Yeah. Uh, the Conqueror class. This robot was particularly adept at taking out armored vehicles. It was a precursor to the Domitar class. Mm. Yep. It looks like a child colored it. Yeah, like it literally looks like pictures. crayon. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it literally does oh look like gosh, a crayon. Right? Yeah. yeah. No, the, the old artwork is just so atrocious. Amazing. It's atrocious. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I thought we were on the same wavelength there. But no, no, no. Apparently no. not. If you think that's good art. I got some uh, some pictures to sell you. <laughs> eBay can... Pro painted? Oh, yeah. <laughs> These models? Sure, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so the next one we have is the Crusader class robot. So designed for quick strikes, this robot was commonly deployed against infantry. Uh, since it specialized in Ooh. anti-personnel combat, it was a well-liked, or it is a well-liked tool of the Inquisition. Yeah, that's something cool. They specifically would requisition this <laughs> robot when they're hunting or whatever. Yeah. So I think too, if they did, like they would come along with the tech priest and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah like, you'd have to. You have to have them. to change out the doctrina wafers. Exactly. Like, so. the, yeah. Oh, you just wanted the robot. It's just sitting there. <laughs> yeah, that's. <laughs> you gave me a faulty robot. You're well, you didn't ask for the tech. <laughs> you didn't rent the tech priest. Those rates are <laughs> so extra much more fifty bucks. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Perfect. Uh, then we got the Domitar class. This was a last. This was the last robot to enter production, before the Horus Heresy began. It was built to cross the battlefield at high speeds and crash into enemy positions. Um, I don't think that's the right one. I think it might be an old picture. Because it might not be the right picture, but you're no. describing the right thing. Oh, okay, I must decide. But anyways, yeah, that one. Um, but one cool thing is the Potorabo, the Primarch of the Iron Warriors, used a variant of the Don- Domitar called the Domitar Ferris as his personal bodyguard. So he had six of them in total um, at him or around him at all times, and they were called the Iron Circle. That's super sweet. And this is before they made them programmed by the wafers of unintelligence. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and Porto Rabo himself controls these ones specifically. And he's like a primer, so like he's probably going... like. Is he actually like, he like slaves slaving them? them? Yeah. Yeah. Does he slave that them? Is... Yeah, he does. Do you remember that in the books? Yeah, we read it. And I don't. I don't know if I don't know if it's in the we book. We read it but... because Eric read it too. No, him? no, we. They, he read. It. He, was in, <laughs> he was in bed and uh, it's story time. So in, interesting cool. enough, they are in the Lost and the Damned, yeah. uh, which is the one of the it's the book two in the Siege of Terror series. Sure. But when they were described, I think I glossed over them because I truly just thought they were like 
a bodyguard, and I don't think I fully grasped the that fact they that were they were robots. robots. Yeah. Because then Mark's telling me about the Iron Circle, and it flashed in my mind. I'm like, oh my god! Like I totally saw these yeah. guys. You just yeah. assume they were space marines. They're, yeah, they're but wild, truthfully, though. like yeah, and they have awesome. like big tower yeah. shields and hammers. Yeah, yeah. but and they, like they're they're big too. They're probably like twelve to fifteen feet tall. Yeah, but yeah, probably. just constantly clunking around. And I do remember yeah. them talking about like the heaviness of them. But yeah. I was just like, oh, they're just big space marines. <laughs> sure. But, no, it's yeah. very much, and I think I just, I must have just glossed over them. There's yeah. no way they, n- I remember, didn't. but it is telepathically linked to the Primarch. Okay. So he slaves them. Okay. Yeah. 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 Which is awesome. Like, yeah. he fights. I like that and better he than he fights, just, like, all his yeah. bodyguards as well. Yeah. Like, yeah. to be able to control that many as well as be Perturabo. Like, <laughs> yeah. So it's very sweet. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, you should Google them. We're not going to talk about the Iron Circle right now. They're cool. But you should take a look at pictures of them. <laughs> or either. wait six years until the episode right, drops. Right, exactly. But it, the Iron Circle is worth looking at. Soon? TM? TM. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. And now we got the Castellan. Right. Castellan with a K. Yeah. Robot. These nearly unstoppable robots are not designed for any one purpose. They appear to be very sturdy, reliable, or maybe easily built since they're the most commonly seen robotic robot in... The Mechanicus. Yeah, on tabletop, there they have the biggest presence, and I don't think there's. Is there any other Legio Cybernetica robot on tabletop? No. Okay. The the only other one that might be a thing is um, um the uh, Vorax. The f- oh no, oh. the the Voltrax, the, the flying one. one. I think you might be able to take those. Really? Yeah, I think so. I I might. In be the very Horus Heresy, off. though, can you take? In the Horus Heresy, you can take. Uh, like probably fifty percent of these. Like okay, okay. they just don't have models. Nah, some no, no, some no. They do. have models. Yeah, all of them. Do. Yeah. No, like fifty percent of them. Oh. Yeah. So there's fully like, there's like 50%. five. <laughs> there's like five of these that have models. Yeah, we've yeah. gone even through them on here. I've seen three, and we're not done. Yeah, that's right. This one looks Fair like enough. my wife. What? The <laughs> 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 but yeah, uh, you said that. This Castellan is like. It's the most commonly seen today in yeah. 40K. So. Yeah, we don't know why. It's just badass. It's easy to build. Who knows? Yeah. But It's the um, variety. The yeah. like, it's Because it's not just built for one thing. You yeah. can just arm it differently. And, yeah. yeah. But yeah, like these in the game, like you need those Doctrina mm-hmm. wafers in order to make them function and do different things. So yeah. It's and, pretty um, cool. Uh, one thing that you just mentioned is that you can kind of like swap stuff out. Most of these have like a fair bit of flexibility in terms yeah. of purpose. Like you can just swap out their arms for different weapons and yeah. it basically completely changes the purpose of the robot. Yeah. yeah, so that's good for this one. You can either do close combat or you could do range. So it covers all your bases. Mm-hmm. All two of them. That's all you need. Can it fly? Either you're shooting. It cannot fly, no. No. Oh, well, then that... Seriously, limits its strategic so function. Yeah. <laughs> My brother was a drone in Afghanistan. <laughs> no, no, Christian's saying that his next, the next state of his evolution uh, is flying, and he's uh, desperately trying to find out how to do it. Okay, the next robot is the Skylax. Oh, this one is Guardian. is actually unique um, because it actually has no cortex. Yeah, uh, and can only function when being directly controlled by a cybernetica tech priest. Yeah, so this one doesn't even have the ability to move. It doesn't do anything. Yeah. It, it effectively just powers down if yeah. there's no one controlling it. Yep. Yeah, and so because of this need to slave them, they are commonly used as bodyguards to Magos. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. You can arrange them once again. This one has chain swords, uh, some type <laughs> of fusion blaster, uh, a welding arc. Uh, it has two, uh, clamps. Two clamps. It has eyes. It has a drill clamp. Oh. It has a, well, it's clamp and drill, boys. <laughs> clamp and drill. Okay, up next we got the Thanatar. Mm. So designed as a mobile artillery platform, the Thanatar is one of the largest classes ever created. It is heavily reinforced to withstand its extraordinary recoil as well as to withstand incoming fire mm-hmm. so it's like it's very beefy looking yeah it's got like a huge cannon on its yeah, back a massive fuck off cannon for sure <laughs> oh yes oh yes. yeah it's huge yeah so now there's another one in 30k yeah. that you can do fair as enough. a model fair enough you with me yeah okay is it fully okay. half yet are we at? no not even close uh well we'll get there the up next we got the vorax uh so this one it was designed Nope, oh, nope, sorry. Uh, was designed to seek out specific targets. It hunts much more independent than other battle automata due to the extra en- engrams placed within its cortex. 
It is so good at killing that it has been turned on independent pop or indentured populations to enforce culls during famines or plagues. Yeah, so this one like very grim dark. It, you can give it just the ability to hunt, and then it just goes. And this is hunts. one of the ones we're talking about that's like animalistic. Right? Yeah. yeah, like it's predatory. It like yeah. can move. Like, yeah, it, it looks like a prairie mantis, like with it, freaking machine gun Gatling yeah. gun arms. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, apparently like this. If ever there was a reason for the Legio Cybernetica to be feared, it's when they turn their machines on their population <laughs> yeah. in Start order culling. to yeah. to get rid of plagues. You guys are famines. hungry? Just mows down a bunch of meat. All right, yeah, here you go. <laughs> Enjoy. Eat your friends. <laughs> Corpse Stark. Yeah, but uh, the the animal part portion of this is the, one of the interesting things I think because it's very different from the other yeah. um, classes that we've seen, yeah. and this is one of the ones that they don't build anymore yeah and they specifically mention that when they're talking about imperium essences yeah in the in the book that we were reading Ooh. um so part of me was like yeah i love the idea that there was an imperium essence who was communicating with a tech priest and was like design me this and i will inhabit it and they <laughs> but it also could be like, yeah have not you not imperium have you ever played horizon zero done no i have not okay because that's what i'm just like mentally picturing is like machine animals right with the yeah. mind oh, a machine with the mind yeah. of an animal i've right? seen the trailers but they don't use but they're completely artificial yeah yeah that's well okay. Her- horizon zero dawn they're artificial i believe so i, don't no, know. I thought they were actually biological yeah. really okay i never played the game sure. so i don't know i've just seen trailers i'm just like for for, for conception anyways carry on but anyways yeah this one looks very different yeah and the final one we got this one this is the one you want christian a bloat drone. That's exactly what it makes me think of, too. Anyways, uh, so the vault... like the base for it? It's just a corrupted bloat. We don't know. Um, so the Volterix... I can't say for sure. The Volterix <laughs> class is the only flying battle automata that we know of, uh, and it's a multi-role war machine. So it can be fitted with heavy war gear or even sophisticated sensory gear, which makes it an invaluable scout or rapid response robot. Yeah, just like my brother. <laughs> drone. <laughs> <laughs> Good old drony. <laughs> oh, drony. <laughs> uh, but it does look like a fly. This is another one that yeah. shares a, a resemblance that is not human. Yeah, yeah. Right? And so it's it definitely looks like, as soon as I saw this before even reading it, I was like, oh my God, it's a bloat. It's a bloat drone. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think for, bloat drones are literally just corrupted versions of these. Yeah, for some confirmed. reason. It's not yeah, for some reason it specifically I says it's not confirmed, but... Like. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they look pretty much identical. Uh, yes, Micah, of all the you biological know bits sticking out of the blow drone, drone is. I'll, I'll pull it up for everyone. But, actually. yeah, the interesting thing is, like, when Imperium Essences were being brought into the Mechanicum, was there a Nurgle demon who was communicating with a tech priest and said, build me this drone and I will inhabit it. And then he inhabits it and later fully corrupts himself into the blow drone. Like, I love the idea. Like, I just, I had never known about the yeah. oh yeah totally yeah i had never known about nope, not this whole thing but <laughs> yeah like it has the two engines on the sides like yeah. the, the, the like the fan engines yeah. yeah see i just love what you're talking about i love more so the idea that somebody's just sitting there making a robot and they just hear this whisper it's like murder babies and i'm like what it's like <laughs> make me a drone <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, okay no, it's, it's interesting I, I like i'm enjoying the thought process of, of imagining these the mechanic I'm communicating with these Imperium essences yeah, and trying to coerce them in to inhabit oh, their man. machines and you know like what's it gonna take for you to inhabit it and, and they think know. they're winning the deal. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I like it. I, I like that. That's really cool. Yeah. Something. So, anyways, a machine that looks like a man. What fools! <laughs> <laughs> All machines are inferior to Bombot. Just remember that. <laughs> That's true. Well, it takes a grenades to explode it, <laughs> yeah. so. and it moves toward. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, Bombot. So that's that's what we got for the Legio Cybernetica. Um, yeah, I, it's another one of those things where it really gets my mind racing. I don't know if oh fuck, what is it called on Instagram? There's this one guy we follow. Um, it they basically do like John Blanche art style, but they make miniatures for it. Oh really? And it's like this that's whole sweet. big group, and but basically yeah, they make a bunch of like crazy weird robots, and like it's very. Uh, like that gothic grim skulls weird horror yeah. type vibe yeah like if you've seen john blanche's artwork yeah 
Um, but like all these just make me want to do like crazy robots, you know, like that just have these weird purposes. And yeah, you could make some that are animalistic, some that are more humanoid and practical. This but one's for sex. Well, <laughs> why do you? Is that Christian? No, no, no. S T T S. Oh, did you say? Sect. Yeah, I, I said it's sex. For a sect. <laughs> yes, it's for sex. I get it now. Sects are building the robot. You guys are <laughs> so dirty. <laughs> But yeah, it would just be cool to like just do what you want with one, some of them. Because like Space Marines, you can't, you don't do what you want with your sex spot. Yeah, yes. you can't, <laughs> you can't sex Space Marines. You know they're in chapters. Yeah, yeah, and brother, they're not sex. Yeah. They're chapters. Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, like these, you can just really let your creativity fly. Um, yeah. So one big thing we've talked a lot, a lot about is AI and how like really there's no AI in the Imperium. Um, allegedly. Allegedly, there are some very close, like machine spirits, are very close to AI. Yeah, we I specifically think that one is open debate. We specifically uh, yeah. did not mention machine spirits during this por- like the episode itself. We're taking a step back from canon. Yeah, and we're just gonna, gonna enter the. We're entering the warp. Ah, the tales. We're gonna do some of tales the of the warp, and we're just gonna discuss what we think things might be. Yeah. So machine spirits. Yeah. So the big thing about machine spirits is um, they are programming AI, however you want to call them. No one really knows. Um, it's never defined fully. Never fully no, they defined. are very clearly machine spirits. Machine. Right. Yeah. Inhabit they the machine. Are spirits of yes. a machine. That you must they appease might, yeah. through oils and chanting. And yeah. Um, but the one the one rule about all machine spirits, uh, machine spirits, like, they can control things like so they control robots they control tanks or whatever yeah. but the one big thing about machine spirits is they cannot modify themselves that's like a written rule about machine spirits so even like they're in they're unable to or you're saying they're not allowed both yeah like i think they're just like an automated function yeah whatever you think they're an automated function yeah a machine uh, spirit I think really? So. Yes. Okay, I disagree on that one. They they seem to have a lot more personality than basic programming would imply. Machine spirits almost seem to be altruistic in some portions, though. Like or drive a land raider into an enemy. But that's yeah. absolutely it. How is that a basic sure. function? Sure, 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 sure. The ability to assess a situation, right. and understand but, that these spaces. So are you, might you help. if you're super religious and you see an event that you can't explain? The you know, of the emperor. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so when the tank drives forward and you accidentally let the break off the parking brake off and it just rolls into the enemy you're like the machine spirit willed such a task right it's but that's well, a dodging, really dumb, dumb, it's fire and dumb way of that's not how it's described though it's not described as mistake it's it's describing the and the machine spirit has a personality sure. and you need to appease it some machine or are you reading are into angry. it as a hyper religious it's possible it's possible anything <clears> is possible <throat> Aliens. <laughs> Here, here's a brief tale from Lexicanum <laughs> about what happened with the machine spirit of, I think it was a Land Raider. One such famous tale is the Land Raider known as Rin's Might that belonged to the Crimson Fist chapter, which survived the missiles that leveled their fortress monastery. Despite not having any crew on board, the machine spirit fought a solo war uh, against an attacking orc warband, killing its war boss and many of his followers overnight before finally yeah, being thank, destroyed. Thank it God was, someone left that gas pedal yeah, press oh down. Right. That's what I'm saying, and though. Picking, that's literally what I'm... Targets. No, it drove yeah. in a straight line. It hit the war boss, and everyone was like, praise the emperor, no, praise the machine No, spirit. you're dumbing it down I, way no, too much. You know what? Much. I'm open. To, I was just throwing that out there as an option. I think you're dumbing it down way too much. I, I think, I think Eric that's really I likes like. the idea of machine spirits. I, I kind of do, too, There's ghosts in the wires. Ghosts in the shell. To me, I can see both. You just hit on something very real for Eric. <laughs> if a land raider did roll down a what hill, kill an orc war boss, <laughs> that would absolutely like ripple through the Imperium as right. like this massive right. story of, of how awesome this is. Yeah. But at the same time, I think that there's enough um, examples of will behind machine spirits. Sure, but when your car when your car has a really hard time starting and you always like, humans have a bad habit of personification. They personify things, right? So like, uh, that's not the word I was looking for, but my point remains the same. Yeah. You know, you call your car a name. You know, it's like, oh, she's acting up today. The engine is a little rattly. (laughs) (laughs) I told you my brother was a drone. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, yeah. So, like, again, could that be just the user reading into, like, you know, oh, my, but my, there's like my boat that kind of you prefer thinking about it. Lists. I, I'm not saying I even prefer. So, this. what do you I'm prefer? Just trying to do you like offer the, the alternative? No, no, of course, I get it. Because I know. 
Sure. Yeah. Play the devil's advocate, but what do you actually enjoy? What do what you do enjoy? I think? Yeah. Do you believe that they I are? We all have machine spirits in us, Eric. <laughs> well, you do. You're a robot. <laughs> but no, do you actually believe that it's nothing more than us, I, per, like projecting I onto like, these? Things? I like to leave it open ended. Personally, I don't want to say definitively one way or the other. I don't think it yeah. should be definitive. I like that one way well. or the other. But I think what other options enjoy? should be explored. What do you enjoy? I kind of like the AI thing. Okay. I like the you know. That's I'm not all gonna, I'm trying to get. Okay. At. So explain the AI thing then. It's AI. <laughs> Done. All right. It's AI. I, but well, no. We don't use those words. I don't, I don't know if it. I, or is AI it like a, is a dumb, weird thing. A like, dumb AI. Like that's that's the thing. Siri. Like, or, I don't think it's. Uh, well, it's not a silica animus. That's for certain. It's not yeah, artificial it, life. And it might not even really be, be like, life at all. Like I said, yeah. like Siri, your it, phone is not alive, but it, you know, you're like, oh, machine spirit of my stop phone. Trying to put Summon it into, Google. Stop trying to put it into our perspective, though. This is 40K. Yeah. Where warp exists. This is something <laughs> that we were talking about well, are earlier. You say, are you implying that machine spirits are like... We literally have examples of the Mechanicum taking Empyrean essences and putting them into machines. Right, but they're not doing how that could they? How could they not... How could some vestige of that exist later in the life? Like, I don't understand. I think machine spirits to, are way too common to um, be that. Yeah, but I, you're trying to rationalize something using our understanding of science, and our understanding of science is not 40K's but that's one of the, no, 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 but that's one of the funny things about 40K is when our science goes really wrong to them... And they worship things that are like, well, that's just this simple function. Yeah. It has a very real practical purpose or thing, but they explain it in a religious context, which gets hilarious. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, but there's also like the flip side where they have way, way, way more advanced technology sure. than we could and there's possibly also imagine. Yes. Magic. <laughs> and then there is also magic. You're right. Yeah. So I, I, I find it tough to try and, I, I don't know, I feel like I lose something when I try and think about 40K in terms and I try and relate it to my personal life like there's 40k loses some of what makes it special when I try and be like well this is exactly how bolters work and in fact we could make one right now no <laughs> the bolter is supposed to be like the emperor's holy weapon like it's one thing to understand <laughs> he drank the kool-aid <laughs> he fucking deep. drank the kool-aid that's why he shaved I, his head did you, <laughs> are you you're all the, joining me now yeah. like you think you're in here with me oh no wait shit. <laughs> <laughs> damn it <laughs> but no I, I think I, I do honestly think we lose something Thing when we try and rationalize, I said that from the start. I said it shouldn't be explained. No, but you're trying to rationalize. I'm giving an option. You what? What do you want? Do you want to rationalize or do you not want to rationalize? Do I you want to give, understand or do you want to not? I understand? want to give various possible explanations okay. and then leave it at that. So, so one of those explanations requires us to have an understanding of science and rationalize their science with ours. Do yes. you like that one? I, I so abandon it. No. I like it. I like it. I, I like know. some things. They think it's a machine spirit. Oh yeah, you gotta follow this ritual. You gotta yeah. turn the lights on really and off. It's really just a user three, manual. Then you gotta press this one. But it's like, yeah, that's how you fucking start a car. Yeah, you, you put the key in the ignition, you turn it. Like that's yeah. how you. Yes. Get, then then if all of a sudden, if all of a sudden the machine it. doesn't start, yeah, right. Then you have to pull out the holy orders and open the hood. Does it mean the machine spirit do doesn't want and... to be awoken up? Maybe. Is, does there actually maybe your car is kind of crappy this? and it doesn't start yeah, every time I, you yeah, turn yeah, it? You know, like it, and that's when you start personifying. It. Yeah, yeah, I, absolutely. I, yeah. I think that there's definitely cases within the entirety of the galaxy where somebody couldn't start a machine that they thought should start one way, and then they attributed it to a machine spirit. I absolutely think that that has to have happened at some point. Something yeah. went weird, and then it was attributed to personality. But I also think that like there has to be within the context of 40k like there's enough examples where crazy unexplainable things oh yes. or even just yes. interfacing with a machine spirit like there's examples yeah. of that isn't yeah. there yeah, Absolutely. And, and there is yeah. like some personality there it's yeah. not just right. hard code okay. it's yeah. not just you know i'm way more willing to accept the fact that every single little quirk people attribute to a machine spirit but not everything is actually because of a machine spirit but I, it doesn't take away the fact that machine spirits exist yes. it's just people overreact and say like well if it didn't turn on it must be the machine spirit when truly it just does was a shitty any fuel in the end yeah. and when you have an entire cult based around that machines that happens a lot <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a lot but okay. like e even I'm the, more willing to accept the, that fact though e even the quirks like they could or like the personality or what makes it unique might even just be like the reading when into it yeah when, faults in the wire yeah exactly yeah. exactly yeah. Like, this one doesn't like to use its targeter it wants you to target it you yeah know? Like, exactly that's broken. because <laughs> yeah exactly that targeter just doesn't sure. work or the sure. coding was just bad right from the get-go and you click this hyperlink but really it takes you somewhere else and you're like that's its quirk but i do think oh, send me to the, the butt website i, I, <laughs> yeah, I do think though i tried to google warhammer and it just sent me to the butts <laughs> i do think that when if you're if you take that as your explanation for 
all machine spirits, Not all. you lose something. So to say that that does exist, absolutely. Yeah, I agree with you. I so, agree okay. with you. It, so it, in the instances... It, may, it tries to rationalize everything as yeah. cold, hard logic, and everything has a real-life explanation. I don't like that either. In the instances where that isn't the case, and there is something truly unexplainable... Truly divine. Yeah. How do you how do you picture that then? Do you picture it as an AI inhabiting a spirit? Do you picture it as the emperor's protection? Yeah, like again, automated functions, right? Like if you're yeah, in a, but you no, know. no, we're saying this is something that oh is beyond it. It's not just an automatic function. This is something that no, the machine is it, not supposed okay, to do. Because I don't think machine spirits fall in that category. Now you're going into like territory that's pretty much forbidden and has been abandoned as a pursuit. Anything beyond like I wouldn't accept warp spirits in the machines as machine spirits that are like allowed to be there or intentional like sure so you, uh, uh, you demon en engines exist right like a, a, yeah. a, a theoretically a machine could be possessed so you say. don't think any of their experiments previous to the Horus heresy of putting empyrean essences into robots none of those exist carried today. off no i don't think i wouldn't say that i would say at this point the demons would have if they were demons, they well, would have revealed their right? Yeah. If they, because mm, we did say there's sure, a but like between, at that yeah. point, that's not well like used tech that like everyone is familiar with. Like, and, and you're I, getting to weird stuff that like sure I that am. would be the exception and not the rule. Yeah, but I'm saying and at like, that point I wouldn't call it a machine spirit even because machine spirits are well like they're everywhere. They are exist in yeah. your day to day your phone functions. Has a machine exactly. Spirit. Like, your welder has a machine yeah, spirit. Exactly. Yes. They're they're very they're a lot more common. But where did the stories come from? And like, I feel like we're mirroring our very first episode discussion. No, I'm just. Did you get that? No, I don't. Oh. That's weird. Deja vu. Uh, but if if the stories <laughs> exist of these yeah. machine spirits, where did they originate? Where what's the what's the seed I'm telling of you. Truth? I'm telling you. Okay, you're in a jet fighter and you have like automated targeting. It's the machine spirit doing that. Really, it's just I'm not, advanced program. I'm not. Yeah, yeah, I'm not targeting anything, yeah. but the machine's just doing it for me. Okay, awesome, right? Like, yeah. but but, but hold that's on. programming. Hold on. Like that's they understand program because programming. tech write these programs. They would understand exactly how that functions. Not when they it's built. Wrote it. Not when it's well, like all hundred thousand years song. ago. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And so much religion, and you like you don't actually know what's going on. You're I know coding because I have read a book and I just literally copy and paste exactly what I've read but i don't understand what but, i'm reading or okay. copying yeah. exactly in, we know that they do have an understanding because there is innovation that happens that's in true 40K. that's true so that's it does it's not that story. they're religiously following it and they don't understand there is actual knowledge there no. so call let's use him as an example right he innovated and he would have had to understand coding on a fundamental level in order to create these new things and so to say that they're just blindly following something i think is does a disservice to anyone in the Mechanicum. <laughs> are, you, are you now defending their pride? Paul's <laughs> not a good example. He is such but a... But it's the biggest example of innovation that we have. <laughs> that, yeah. It's it's a it's a slippery slope. Like, I, I, I really don't know where I fall because I do kind of like the overly ritualized, like, we don't understand what we're doing and why we do it. I like that. It's grimdark. It's like, yeah, you have literal coders who don't know what they're doing. They just press buttons and copy information that yeah. they don't understand. I love that. But at the same time, you're right. There is evidence that supports innovation. It does support things like there is there is a fundamental understanding of like the basics of technology. Yeah, like they're not complete idiots. No, exactly. And 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 yeah, like I think just because of the myriad of authors and the different takes they all take, they all kind of have a, a they slide somewhere on that scale, right? Depending on what the story is and how they sure. want to tell it. But yeah. to me, I would use that as kind of grounds for there are those extreme instances where there is a machine spirit with personality and there are these instances that very well that could be the case i'm not arguing against that i'm just saying like let's let's offer all the sure. options yes. and then you can pick and choose in your mind where you want to land on that scale right That's true. so there are three types of artificial intelligence narrow and weak general or strong is this real life yeah yeah oh, okay uh, is it just artificial not like yeah who knows where the, how just let me finish. Sure. Just let the man get a point. finish. And okay. artificial superintelligence. So currently, right now, we have AI. We have Dumb narrow man. and weak intelligence, or, or narrow and weak AI. Siri, Google. Like, what, like what, basic we have machine learning that can beat the first level of Mario. Exactly. We have stuff like that that, like you said, can beat Mario. So would the that first not level just it be really, really <laughs> tapers off quick? <laughs> still, still though, give it ten thousand years and maybe it'll beat level two. But anyways, like it's evolving. It, it def machine spirits definitely are AI, but like there's are, AI right, can mean such functions? different things. Are they learning? Yeah, they're yeah. adapted to their surroundings and stuff. Are they aware of what they're doing? Probably not. 
Are they? Well, you have to be aware. Of but some then you get into point. things like no, personalities. No, you, yeah. Right? Right. So, so then, and are they knows? or are they not? Who knows? Exactly. And I like to leave it maybe, there. Maybe I like to offer all the options and then let people pick and so choose. So with the example that's given, like real life AI, it basically is told like, like you simplify it down. So for example, first level of Mario, it, you tell it like, um, if it goes back to the start screen, that's bad. Try something different. And then it, you'll tell it like this. Goomba is basically simplified to like a moving red box or something and then so at some point it's going to realize if you hit the side of a red box it's bad so then the next generation of it it'll try and make a different decision to avoid that going back to the, the start difference screen. is that you are telling the robot it's bad and the robot it is, sets up can't you set up the parameters and, and that's the thing is, is it's the parameters yes. that's what we have right now yes. is most of it is we set the parameters There's, and then it just runs but from that what point. we're doing also is we're going back to the idea of we're trying to rationalize our understanding of 40k with what we currently understand no, no, and I think that's a problem no, no. So I, I agree for the most part. I don't like super pseudoscience. It isn't anything. But when you're Monomolecular. talking. Monomolecular. Yeah. But when you're talking <laughs> about terms, the terms carry over. When you're talking about what actually is AI. Yeah. If they're going to throw if carry, they're going to throw those words around, they have those to terms be okay, grounded in reality. But if AI in like, 40K gotta, stands for abominable intelligence. AI. And, and it's they also sure. describe it as artificial life. Sure. Two things that we have not yet defined. Sure. Sure. What are words, really? We also use <laughs> no, emperors, the term emperor, in a very different way than they would in 40K. The terms, I think, can have different meanings, even though they kind of stem from something similar. And I think that this is the case. Like, I just have a hard time trying to put them together. And no, I, I agree with you. I hate when stuff is like, oh, yeah, you just got to inject the plasma core with the fails and blah, blah, blah. And then you got da, 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 yeah, That's Star that's, Trek. That's, that's retarded. Yeah, I Eric, hate that. Eric knows how to but, build a reactor. But I, well, I, I do know how to build a reactor. Right. Yeah, it sounds dumb I can't to you. Build, I can't build one that belongs in a titan because i don't understand 40k science but i just understand <laughs> real science earth science <laughs> to me i like it when they throw in a couple of made-up words to make it sound cool make it sound advanced but i hate it when they try and like rationalize and explain the process of how this like future technology works michael right. likes midi chlorians uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> how much time you have? Do we have, do we have i listen, I listen yeah. to a certain podcast that you may or may not have heard of. Have you listened to Star Wars? Anyway, yeah, a little bit. And and they do talk about midichlorians, and I do yeah. think that after hearing that and kind of after there's the extra universe, like the the other stuff that's not in the movies, that they do a good job of watering down how the movies presented midichlorians in a way that I do sure, sure. appreciate more, whereas before I was like, this is the dumbest crap ever, whereas they've added canon to make it less egregious. Sure. And in some cases, cool in some small ways. Sure. AI, this, so this is Back on to Let's Academy. <laughs> AI is not to be mistaken for a machine spirit that has parallels for um, basic uh, differences. What? What? Yeah. Is that a bomb bot entry? <laughs> yeah, that's a bomb bot entry. Basil. Basil? Grenades. Basil? Uh, okay. Grenades. So it's basically say you aren't supposed it's, to mix up the two because there are key differences. Yeah. The, the main ability where I led this whole conversation off with is they can't enhance themselves. Yeah. It can't. It's not alive. It's not alive. But then it's, you get the problems like it doesn't have a personality. Well, AI, it's l- right. So then are you emitted. reading the personality into something that's not really there? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And who knows? Well, it. But not I, because clearly it says it's not. The so. clarifying factor wasn't it's not alive. This is devil's advocating, by the way. <laughs> but it doesn't say it's not alive. It says it can't improve itself. So long as is there's that, some is that type, Mark's terms or is that no, the terms that was the lexicanum. Read? The key difference is that it can't improve itself. Hold on, they say they are distinct from forbid- forbidden abominable intelligence, not artificial intelligence. They say AI, sure, either way. There no, is no, no, no. There is a, a there is a distinction between abominable intelligence and artificial intelligence. But the distinction is also very loosely defined All on, per- on purpose I, because like they're trying to distance yes. it from real life because yes. they're like, well, AI is such a complicated concept. Are we talking about dumb AI? Are we talking about exactly. all the devils of AI? No, we're talking about abominable intelligence right. which is a very 40k thing that doesn't exist in our yeah. reality and so i think that in 40k they have what we right now would call as artificial intelligence that we have and i do think that it would be able to perform certain functions but i do think that it's at the point where it's limited from improving itself according to that definition anyways and to me that be kind of yeah like there ha- like it could just be the difference between like 40,000 years of development and where we're at now type of stuff but like the basic small level technology stuff that they have we have like a gun that shoots a bullet it's very mechanical it's very simple if you know the basics they have like crazy laser weapons that like and like a las gun i 
couldn't understand how the heck that's working. Like, why can I throw it in a fire and suddenly it can like recharge? recharge? <laughs> like, I don't understand that. And so there's no point in me trying to pretend that what I know as a laser gun from what I've seen now is in any way comparable to that in the future of 40K. And so when it comes to something like intelligence, I think that they could see what we see as advanced artificial intelligence as a dumb fridge. Like, it, we have different definitions for the same things because there it's commonplace and here it's... That's what I was saying, but that's what Eric hates. Technology. No, I, I just hate blanket stating and saying that machine spirits don't exist in a way beyond us projecting onto machines. That, I think, was a tough, a tough thing to say. I don't... I, it's too I'm generalized of a statement. I'm it's too generalized options. of a statement. But you said, like, no, like, what happens in the Imperium is that all the people, they just interact with the machines on a daily basis, and anything that happens in the machine they assume is the machine spirit, and there technically is nothing beyond a machine. And I think that takes away a lot of what a machine spirit is meant to be. In, right in here, it says that they are pre- capable of exhibiting emotions such as hatred or stubbornness if if yeah my freaking gun doesn't load right hold on stubborn if there's if you have a land raider and he's fighting one type of xenos and when you hit the gas pedal it goes much faster than normal and when you target things it's much quicker in targeting and it's much better at aiming and then you fight a different xenos racist land raider (laughs) racist (laughs) land absolutely they they exhibit (laughs) just clarify they exhibit a a hatred against one specific xenos now is it hatred though or is it literally that they fought them a bunch and they know how to best fight them and maybe it's on board AI maybe it's on board AI knows where to target weak spots but to remove the ability we're going in circles we're going in he is. No, we're not. <laughs> he's giving <laughs> options. He said it. You're not right. He's not right. It could be both. It could be neither. No one knows. We don't know. I'm past this conversation. You guys <laughs> wore me down. Oh. I'm worn out. Yeah, I'm a little salty. Yeah, I know. I because they don't like AI. We're, we no, are going no. in circles. No, we I, are going in circles. Okay. There's no I, progress here. Can I ask one more question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So as far as <laughs> I can no, tell, freaking shut up. up. <laughs> as far as I can tell, Christian is saying like it. At, based on the information we know, it's left open to interpretation, and you can kind of put your own spin on it, your own flavor on it, depending on how you go. Yes. And so he, I think, yeah, sorry. sorry, as far as I can tell, like Eric is saying that there's enough evidence in the world and within the lore to be able to say with some confidence that there has to be more than that. Sometimes, and so, yeah. And so to me, I think that we all can agree if we can if we can get to the point Careful now. where where we can say that You don't speak for me, Mike. <laughs> are there concrete examples within the lore that there is some type of personality? There is some type of of extra thing. But so then you get in the problem of interpretation. Are you reading into it the person? No, no, no. As it's presented within the lore. Not 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 But even as it's presented, you yeah, can read so into things. My my final statement on the thing is yeah. Oh, and then it's done, right? Oh then yes. No, no, because yeah, no, yeah, this will this will solve all our issues. The, oh. the word machine spirit... <laughs> Fuck you! Fuck you! <laughs> no, no, no. The, <laughs> no, word, sorry, the sorry. word machine spirit is used for a wide variety of things, and it is also applied to things that it shouldn't be applied to. It's a blanket pe- term. Yeah, so some people... Like, we, when we're talking about it, I think all of us are talking about things that actually have machine spirits. Like, land raiders are known to have machine spirits. Drop pods Drop as well. Pods, yeah. Drop Very pods. well known. Like, there are some even Vulcans, like, even, I think, have yeah. machine spirits. There's there a machine are, spirit within yeah. them. Yeah, but to, to maybe your, your common everyday citizen... Your toaster might have a machine spirit. And your in that fridge case, has a machine spirit. That's why fridge, at night it starts to rumble. And, exactly. Yeah. So it, it makes weird noises. So the you radiator. Get, you can get both yeah. examples where it is actually something beyond, and then it's also something where, yes. oh, your, your fridge isn't working. Um, we all ma- agree so far. Yeah, plug it in. You appease the machine spirit, right? <laughs> yeah. That's not a fucking machine spirit. I think... I think that we can all agree on, right? Yes. Yeah. It, there's a very yeah. wide way, range, and even in the Imperium, literally and what I was saying. If I misinterpreted stuff. what you were saying, I apologize. We're not. We're but saying there's just options. What I had heard. <laughs> we're just saying <laughs> what I heard. Options every <laughs> okay. which way. End it. End it now. Put um, us out of our misery. I got another uh, thing that's fun. <laughs> go, go, do it, do it. Do you guys not? Do we have another hour to argue? Throne Mechanicus. Is yeah. that what you're going to talk about? Throne Mechanicum. Yeah. Yeah. So there. Oh, They're yeah. used in Imperial Knights and as well as Titans, but more commonly in Imperial Knights. Um, and basically, they are they are definitely machines that are capable of learning and having feelings imprinted upon them. So you will actually have knights, generations of knights that go into these, and then the the throne mechanicum will actually download, absorb whatever word Their you want to use the personality. So 
it's not actually like, is it alive? It's definitely not alive. Or, it's is, just it, somehow, or is it absorbing? Yeah, it's just yeah. somehow taking on these characteristics. Because there are nights where it's like, yeah, they don't like favoring their right knee because, yeah. Back got, in the day, they injured it or whatever. Yeah, and, and, and that actually had like a detrimental effect on the pilot because he felt that. So that Because the, his mind is melded with the machine. Exactly. Right. So this is another example of, I don't think this is even AI. I think this is more just like, well, artificial learning, whatever. It's the, no, but but it's the fact it's, that it can write itself like you can interact with a remote all you want yeah. that remote is never going to learn yeah. your tendency for but remote. there are smart tvs no 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 no. <laughs> even with the basic remote I, I i really like channel five and i keep pressing channel five you, you channel program five. it though. over time that yeah. button wears down that button becomes a little listed sometimes i have to press <laughs> harder on that button uh-huh. that's a hardware does... fault not a software thing sure but this is just extrapolating the idea until like well hardware and software are very different okay sure whatever, whatever. I quit. No, I'm done. Like, I'm over it. We're going back. We're dragging right back I like into the, the whole thing. I like the throne mechanic. Hum. I, it's an interesting thing. It, it it does show the capacity to grow and hold onto things beyond what was originally intended mm-hmm. for its creation. And yeah. I would actually say the way that this article in Lexicon is worded, from the way I read it, is that it does actually potentially give very practical explanations to why it acts in the way it does, why it would have personality and stuff like that, to the point where it might not even be like what we're referring to as the machine spirit necessarily, and that it is basically just, it's gone through so many simulations, it's gone through so many generations, it's gone through so many um, examples of the same type of combat and different types of combat, and it learned different things along the way. And so as it's going through, if somebody's trying to just walk off a cliff for no reason, it's going to know, oh, that's bad. Big falls are not a good thing. <laughs> I've done that one. I don't want to do that. And then it, <laughs> not this it, time. it might yeah. step in. And so, so that could be perceived as personality, whereas that could also be a learned function. Like yeah. a learned function because of something that happened. That's way closer to like your Mario example. Where yeah. It's just and like, that's kind of what I was drawing yeah. on. Yeah. Where it's basically just been provided certain information. It had certain parameters at some point, but because it's been passed down for generations, it's yeah. had however many centuries of combat experience. I I guess the question is, is it able to enter in a new... Is the throw Mechanicum... Okay, a knight goes into a scenario it's never been in before. It's pilot and the knight has never been in. uh, Some race or some beast or whatever that it can't assess it in a heartbeat because it's never seen an example of it before. Yeah. Will every knight react to that the same way or will their personality of the knight help dictate how they react to those things. And that's an interesting thing is we don't have an example of you doing it. You don't know whether it's friend or foe or how dangerous or how safe it is, but will these two different knights have different ideas on how to approach it based yep. on what they've previously learned? Yeah, and that shows that it's not just a danger or non-danger thing. It, it can also be like a choice of preference. <laughs> no, no, okay, well... How much, how much firepower do you want to put into this right now? Do you want to blast it with your most dangerous weapon or are you just going to throw a knife at it and... Be done with it, right? Like people take different. We we react to things differently, but based so, on our previous. Learning. Yeah, exactly. But, but it's that's, learning, and that that shows a beyond a simple like ah, that's death, that's death, that's death, that's death. It shows that we can no no because it can it can be so simple as oh I've been in combat before, but how do you know you're in combat with this thing? The I, pilot's there. To yeah. Make that how judgment. does the pilot assess the situation? He how does he trigger. assess the situation <laughs> when you walk into aware. it? How does he know it's dangerous? Because how do you know something's dangerous? And that's dangerous the thing. There? Maybe yeah. you don't. Maybe you both walk you in don't there. You always know. Okay. You walk into a cloud of gas. Yeah. It might be dangerous. It might not be. Sure. And what do you do? I take precautions either way. Okay. Does a so, knight understand how to take precautions? Maybe the knight doesn't, but the pilot should. But even the knight might. Like, maybe it's that's been not, enough. No, yeah. but gas lo- clouds. It's like, hold your breath. Okay. I don't know if this is safe. But yeah, like history has told me, hold my breath, otherwise yeah, exactly. I might die. Like it's, it's, it's better to be wrong and live than, yeah. But that's not it. Like making a, a decision, like oh, oh, I've never been in this. What should I do? It's more. I think it still comes back to what it has experienced. Maybe it has experienced. If it's not sure, be careful. Yeah. Like another interesting thing about the throne, though, is it rewrites the person's mind that it's melding with. Yeah, it does. It's a two-way street. I yeah. yeah. I think that... You you either weak enough that you can't overpower it, or you're strong enough and you overpower it. And then you leave your mark on it. Yeah. And then the next person that comes along, there's a little bit of you left over. Yeah. So there's a little bit of me left over. <laughs> but, Gross. Yeah, it, it's another interesting <laughs> example of, like, mechanicus? weird no. here. pseudo-AI type thing where... What is that? What? Are you doing what? There? You're on <laughs> camera, Eric. I will remind you, sir. 
um, I don't know. I got no other examples of what I want to talk about. Do you guys got anything else? Uh, I had kind of a cool idea hmm. of the idea of creating my own cohort. Okay. Um, so back when the Accords, or maybe Sect, maybe a Sect is a better idea for this. Yeah. Uh, but back when the Accords, I know it's pretty cool. Back when the Accords of Mars, or the Crimson Accords, sorry, were written, and it stated that, you know, the Silica Animus is evil, and anyone who attempts to recreate it is evil and must be killed, and then everything with the Silica Animus in it also must be killed. Yeah. Um, I had the idea, like, what if you created a cohort and of the Legio Cybernetica, and you viewed it as, like, your holy mission to hunt down uh, all potential abominable intelligences and it was like mm -hmm. the idea is that you would specifically create a cohort and all they did is you know they didn't guard forge worlds yeah. they tried to avoid campaigns or crusades unless they were like no i think there's an ai on this thing that i want to hunt down and fight so yeah it was kind of just like what's the purpose of like my specific cohort is like no like yeah. my purpose is to hunt down and sometimes AI. it leads you down a path where there wasn't an ai at the end yeah so, absolutely and yeah. to me i hope that like more often than not yeah, yeah it's it's a dead end and i think that it's cool if at some point you oh, do yeah. come across that but if like every other mission you're coming across like abominable intelligence like at this point no, it's no, so no, rare within the universe no 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 so. like, like it, it yeah. Like, there should be dead ends in your It's lore. one Please. of those things where it's like <laughs> yeah. you research and hunt for 700 years. Yeah. And then you are like, all right, I've exhausted this. There's no AI at the end of this. Now on to my next clue yes. or whatever. Yeah. Or, okay. So I, cool. I just, I like the idea that, um, like, the Crimson Accords and the need to kill AI is still a very, I, I wanted to re- bring life back into it. Yeah. I, I like to think that the men of iron are still somewhere out there. Well, there already is UR025. He still exists. Yeah. And he is a confirmed and the, and man of iron. I, I think he's one of many. And they yeah. are one hidden. of um, many? Not like many as in like millions and billions. But sure. like he is. Tens. How, how, what's that one fucking meme? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. How many is too many? Yeah. Get, Depends. So, are you talking you're... killed children? Or <laughs> Four yeah. dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, three dollars? <laughs> Not a lot. Three dead children? That's a lot. <laughs> Okay, I have a question about that specific example. What was it? You are you are zero two five. You are you are zero two five. No. What was it like? Was it murder all humans? Was it no? He's he's civil? masquerading. He's as pretending a, to be a mechanic. A, yeah, robot. he's he's pretending to be a Legio Cybernetica robot. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He very much looks like a Castellan too. He is very. He's very got a unique similar. body, but yeah, it's, it's similar shape and size. Yeah, it's yeah. a very clunky machine. Mm -hmm. And his weaponry, his weaponry 60s. doesn't speak um, of being anything special. An assault cannon. And... So then, how yeah. does that story end? I'm curious. Spoilers. Is the Blackstone? Blackstone? I don't know. It's still, oh. They're still going Oh, it's still on. going. That makes yeah. sense. Well, I think Mark just said they released the last The thing. last chapter is going to come out. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, if, if you look at his weaponry, like, that's just an assault cannon and a power clock. There's he nothing might, special on In his him. rules, though, they might have some kind of hidden tech. I don't know. He regains a wound. Yeah. I did look at the rules. Like, ultimately, okay. like... It's not his body that makes him special. It's his mind. It's his mind. That's and what that, I'm saying. Like yeah. he's trying to dumb it down. Like how much has he changed over like the? That, yeah, yeah. That that's not an be, example of all men of iron. No, no that's exactly. just the skin he's currently wearing. Exactly. But I'm saying like how much has he changed in order to try and fit in with the Imperium mm -hmm. and try and blend in? Yeah, I'd probably say all of it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like why would you choose well, to do I mean, that? When yeah, you when can you go be into anything it, that you want. Right. Exactly. And that, then that's exactly it. Like if you've seen Brainiac and Superman, or if you've seen like uh, who's the robot in uh, Avengers. Ultron. Ultron. Ultron, you're right. Like he, oh, he can inhabit many bodies. He can be one body. He can yeah. he can take any form. But yeah, no, I I like the like URS twenty five. Um, I think he's cool. I like him. Do you I get would, a sense for his intent? I'm like a <laughs> right, little bit. But that's exactly it. Your guy's like on his trail. He might be a hundred years behind it. Yeah, but he's, might even be two thousand years behind yeah. him. But I'm but hunting there. UR twenty yeah. zero twenty five. I like that. Yeah. And every once in a while, like you your run sect into a guy yeah. and your cohort or whatever actually does kill an AI. And like, what a moment of celebration that would be yeah, for but it's also you. super dangerous and you might absolutely you might lose your entire cohort or whatever to this so i, I don't know i like i the, like it no, i like giving like, it, like that purpose yeah yeah, yeah. either way though bomb bots are a type of simple war robots <laughs> <laughs> well thank god we can throw a grenades at them <laughs> so yeah uh anything else it's a cool idea tau ai Oh, oh yeah, I actually did want to bring oh. that up here. We, yes, and we did talk about it a it's long just, time just, ago. Just say that they exist. 
I think it's dead. it's not abominable intelligence. What? But by whose standard, though? Well, because now because it's not. <laughs> oh God, we're back in. No, no. <laughs> I don't think it's actively trying. There's no examples of that Tau AI. You don't know what trying. it wants. Okay, you don't. There know are what it no wants. examples of that Tau AI actively trying to destroy its creators. Right? Why does that have to be the sign of abominable AI? intelligence? It doesn't have even to be. Abominable, no, it no, doesn't. abominable. Yeah. The definition was self-improving, I believe. So, is there examples of how? Okay. Sure. Yes, AI it is definitely itself. self-improving. And to me, that's pretty abominable. Right. And again, like they self-improve. It gets weirder. Yeah. I, I tell drones. I can't. No, 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 no. But the AI. Okay, hold on. Are you talking about? Because there is a self-aware AI in the Tau lore now. What's so, that? Don't say on Va because it's just a hologram. No, he's uh. Uh, he's in Farsight's Enclave. Uh, he runs a battle suit, right? Yeah. Yeah. So he sits in a crisis battle suit forever? That's like his body? Like that's UR-25's body? I would imagine. I don't know all the, the lore behind it. And okay. But a Tau drone, they are described as having AI. Would you consider that Different like... Different levels of AI. Would you We're going that, back, right? We're dra- no, I'm not you, going there, Eric. I refuse. <laughs> I refuse. Would you say that's more like an Imperial type of AI? Where it's like not... Because a Tau drone, can they self-improve? I don't. I don't I, think so. I think no, how, no, it's a dumb AI. Exactly. Yeah, they're very. Right. They're very but there dumb are smart AI in the Tau, like and the I, one, like it, the one in Farsights. Is that a rogue thing? Or I've never heard of that. So. There is also there is one that's like taking over the Tau, isn't there? Did I misread that? Is that a thing? I don't know. I've never heard. I'm that. pretty sure that's a thing. Where it's yeah. like all I know is Tau drones. The Tau are now being led by an AI, but they don't know it. Well, ethereals, but that's anyway. No, no, yeah, it's a whole thing. Yeah. But it's not ethereals. So just Tau drones are described as having AI. Yeah, but it also very clearly states that they need multiple Tau drones in order to make more complex decisions. Right. So if they are if they are unable to make those complex decisions on their own, I we literally agreed on this. Already. Yeah. So I'm that's a dumb like, AI. The drones, but I'm not talking about drones. I'm talking yeah, about yeah, and that's yeah. what they're called. Drones. So Tau has AI, and even drones might not be a great word for those because they can. Well, like they're called shield drones, aren't they? No, I know, but I'm just thinking what the actual definition of a drone is. But sure, uh, but Tau call them or humans call them. They're called drones. Tau yes, drones on yes. tabletop. And that is a descriptive. But yeah, so Tau have AI. We know that. Yeah. Necron have AI. Eldar do it. have AI, I believe. Uh, do they? I th- yeah. Feel, like I think, their whole economy and or not economy, but their whole the craft world. Everything. I thought it was yeah. alive and they sing it into existence. I didn't. Think I remember that it was they actual... had AI somewhere in some capacity. And even if it could be even pre-fall Eldar. But that's the other thing is like, is I don't think it describes, is there AI just like run by spirits? Or I, is I it, always thought it was more spiritual it could be. It in could its nature. Be, but I think it's open-ended as well. Really? I believe so. Okay. I could be wrong. Orcs definitely. Send your complaints to James Complaints. Don't. <laughs> James <laughs> Complaints. Yeah. yeah, orcs I don't think it normally exhibit any <laughs> AI. I'm thinking. <laughs> Tyrion, yeah. it's possible. Don't. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't be thrown off by orcs. What else? Yeah. Yeah, Tyranids, right? Everything is biological with them. That would almost no... be a sweet war boss. There is like a An war AI? boss who like wired himself into a forge world. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, controls like the planet. That's yeah. Sick. Like, but that's that's a biological yeah, yes, creature taking over AI. a machine. That's a what servitor level right. type, type. Not level. No, but, but it's still like a biological brain. Yes. I'm saying like what if... It's an it's, android type it, thing. Like a, a crazy mad doc builds a robotic war boss by accident even it comes alive and is now leading this war but like yeah but uh, there's no examples of that no 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 i'm just making it up right now yeah but i think that'd be kind of cool yeah what else is out there dark eldar the uh the i think they also say it's unknown what the spindle robots are on blackstone they're ai spindle robots i've never even heard of those they're like Um, little spidery looking weird guys there are some kind of ai and they they don't talk about their origins people are assuming it might be uh old ones oh never mind we talked about those during the uh black crusade episode just recently if yeah 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 so i and i don't know do they they don't say what what their origin is right I think they try no, to leave that. They say the origin remains mysterious. Yeah, and but like, they are native to Blackstone Fortresses. Right, exactly. And Blackstone Fortresses like precursors almost every technology. Right. So in then, the like, galaxy. are they made by old ones? Even is yeah. the question. What What is their origin? Do they develop after the fact? Who knows? Right. That's cool. Do you want to pull up a picture there, Mark? Oh yeah. What else? What else is an example uh, of uh, AI <laughs> doing things? <over> there? <laughs> click. <laughs> every few minutes, click. He's just playing a game. Yeah, I think Tau, like, they are much more accepting of AI. 
until just, it turns around and bites them. Yeah. I'm telling you, it man, hasn't yet, but uh, no, but I think that's a new plot point that they're trying to push. I, and again, I could um, be wrong. I could I, yeah, be wrong. I'm, I'm open to being wrong. I need to see what you're looking at because Anva is like their current leader. Yes, who and died. he's a dead Tau ethereal who has now a hologram and like yes. does appear to people, but I believe an is AI it, is in control and using him as a front is kind of what the is story that is. No, again, I, that's I'm your head cannon. There, no, no, no. I think I do. You actually have like reason to believe that? Or yes, is that what you I believe I read it somewhere, okay. but like my memories are. Are you mixing up Reddit and canon lore? He does that constantly. <laughs> yes. My mind. He writes Reddit lore. I'm the only one on Reddit. <laughs> <I just laughs> comment to myself. Yeah. Yeah, and then the whole thing. It like, does say right there. the On the lexicanum and the source is the... Okay, I should go read that then. The 8th edition Tau Codex. Yeah. But it does say his original personality and memories have been implanted into an AI like device. Sure. So, but so it definitely lacks and, and people, yes. And now people but. are reading into it like, oh, okay, is this the new men of iron that it's, you know, could this be the direction the title faction go in and they're going to be like the tech robots. And, and it know. definitely does kind of open itself up because you have like a what basic framework of his there? personality and who he was and his memories. And then you put it in an AI. That's basically the same as what we were talking about, about setting the parameters from like that. In, it, so the that's first the, moment you turn that on, that's sure. That's him. But five years after a few not battles, even five years, one he's, second at processing, yeah, just, yeah. being able to process that Infinite. much faster. Yeah, he becomes like, yeah. something How would he else. Actually, grow. Then, yeah, transcends. to me, I think that it does. And it the other weird change. thing, the other weird thing too, when you're moving or digitizing consciousness, one, do you digitize Which consciousness, is real, right? or do you? No, but like it's, <laughs> no, I, it's I theoretical, right? Yeah, like, yeah. do you digitize consciousness and actually turn you into a machine, or or like upload your consciousness into a computer, or? Are you copying the files of your brain and you're really going to die, but the memory of you in the computer thinks you lived on? Same as like the teleportation thing of like, do you die and then atoms reassemble somewhere else that has all your memories and that's not really you and you're dead? Or does it actually move you across? In the end, the end result is very similar, isn't it? Because isn't, no, isn't it there's, so there's, indistinguishable? It, it's indistinguishable to everyone except for the person that died. And they obviously can't tell you if they died. So, the so end you, is the exact you same. Eric, the Eric yeah. that's looking at me right now will be dead. Yeah. But the Eric in the computer tells me it has all your memories and says it's you and right. thinks it even thinks but it's you. But you don't know that you're dead and the computer doesn't yeah, know Yeah, I can't dead, tell you that I'm so dead. So the end result is the exact same. The end result to me is that's the exact same. Well, even but to I'd me still, and the robot, even me and no, the no, computer. Because I'm know. still dead, though. I, I died. Versus I actually transposed my consciousness into the computer. I am actually in the computer. Has anyone ever seen the movie The Prestige? Of course. Yeah. That's a great movie. It's that. Spoilers. Oh, no, that yeah. one's very... No, no, no. So what happens is oh, Wolverine... Oh, sure, sure. No one knows if they're the copy or the real. Yeah, so... But except that the... No, no, the real one dies, and it's always the copy that lives. Exactly. But, but that's putting a hard statement on what I'm saying that you but don't and the, can't the, the new person is the copy. As far as they know... You will have all the memories the you exact think... exact same right, person. Exactly. So, again, instead of digitizing, let's talk teleportation. The Eric that's sitting in this chair and the Eric that will sit in that chair. When I ask the Eric in that chair, are you still alive? He's going to say, yeah, of course. Like, I'm I was here. there, now I'm here. And I have all your memories up until even that point. He doesn't know that you died. The Eric that's looking at me right now, he doesn't exist anymore because he's dead. Right. And you can't say anything. Versus right. it actually did transpose. Right. It actually did work and you are now over there. But if you if you remove, like, the... Because you're thinking about this. You're specifically trying to say, like, ooh, is this the real Eric or is this not? But in the end, three years from now, like, if you didn't think about it, anymore? it doesn't no, matter. It wouldn't matter really to me, matters. but it matters to you because you just died. Is that what you've been doing this whole time? <laughs> That's all that matters. Can we end this episode? <laughs> just wait. Just wait. This, this is actually good. Like, do you get what I'm saying? It doesn't matter to anyone else in the room except you because you're the one that dies. If I told you you will die jumping into this teleporter... Would you do it? Right. No, I, there's no way I would. Right. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it essentially will make a copy of you that right. thinks you've and made it. Eric, in, in Eric the... as an idea, will still live on through this copy. Yes, and right. it'll have all your memories. And that will be a plague on the galaxy indis- for sure. <laughs> Indistinguishable yeah. from you. Yeah. And but there's... you will be dead. I yes. won't know you died. Okay. Mark bring, won't know you bring died. it back to 40K will, then. Will Eric... Does he still have a soul or is he a blank? Well, I'm, like... I'm a ginger, so. Okay. He's already a blank. But 
But I have no soul. It, within the 40k world, bring it back to at least something somewhat on topic. Yeah, well, we know what, teleportation works in 40k. So then, we don't know about digitizing consciousness, and Tao have small souls anyways. Yeah. So mm-hmm. does Anva's spirit go yes. into the machine? I don't exactly, know. Exactly, yeah. W- is because the idea of a soul and spirit is very important in 40k. Yeah. Right? Does Anva's... <laughs> Does that just say Bombot over and over again? I no. wish. <laughs> Does Aunva's soul actually transfer into the machine is would be very a very important distinction. We don't know, right? Did Aunva yeah, really die in the machine is just mimicking yeah. the br- what brain is waves? That? Or is it, you know. It looks like gibberish. But... <laughs> All right, well. It's a good place okay. to end it. This episode is very long. It's not that long, but yeah. Long enough. Anyways, <laughs> anything else? Uh, go join our Patreon. If you're still listening, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I, f- I apologize. <laughs> Why do you apologize? $2 a month. You get video content eventually. What's Hopefully this one, but for? we'll see. Our behavior. Mark is our not. collective group This behavior. is what you want to apologize for? Yeah. Out of all the behavior that you've exhibited <laughs> over the three years, that's right here. This is what you feel is worthy of apologizing Yeah, because everything else was a joke, but this is too real. <laughs> I think Mark's <laughs> mind is broken. Yeah. He just needs a minute to process. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you for listening to this uh, episode on the Legio Cybernetica. Thank you for joining us, Christian. Thank you for joining us, Micah. Mm -hmm. It's good to have you back. Thank you. Um, And we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us, Mark. Oh, you're welcome. You're always here. See you.